Welcome to the podcast, the unnamed podcast. Uh, this is a bit odd because we used to, I used to, with most of the people on here today, have a podcast called Film Exploitation. But that kind of ceased last year and I haven't done a podcast since. So, but, I, but my favourite podcast every year was the end of year chat we had around movies. It was awesome. And I thought for this year, I kind of wanted to bring it back. But I don't know what I'm going to do with the podcast, so it's a podcast, and we'll do something with it. But welcome, welcome to the podcast. With me, this episode, um, my good movie friends, we have a podcaster, Mr. Andrew Mackay. How are we doing, Andrew? Yeah, I'm very well, Phil. How are you? <clears throat> yeah, it's been a while, so it's been a while. Um, mm. Joining us is filmmaker, podcaster, raconteur... Uh, and ladies' man, Mr. Ross Boyas. How you doing, Ross? <laughs> that was fabulous. That was good, wasn't be, it? <laughs> I would like to be introduced like that wherever I go. That's the amazing. <laughs> That's great. Isn't it? Um, I, uh, <laughs> I, I, don't, I totally forgot to say I'm very well, thank you. How are you? Yeah, I, I'm good. And joining us uh, is Mr. Uh, the, the one of the world's most. Keen proponents of Skype. Um, it is Mr. <laughs> Matt <Man> Tuddy. <laughs> Thanks did, for man. that. <laughs> you couldn't think of anything film related. Just no, no, that I've I had could, a but I just nightmare thought, with Skype. Yeah, being, being that it's taken us forty minutes to get online um, due to Skype issues, mostly your site this time. I thought that yep. was an appropriate intro. We good? Yeah, all good. Thanks. Excellent. Can I, so, can I just can I just quickly say I like being introduced to raconteur and you introduce me as a Skype enthusiast. Yeah, <laughs> <You're> asking <laughs> raconteur, ladies man, Matt can't enthusiast. work out Skype. Skype enthusiast. Thanks, Thanks friend. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? So, um, oh, and also uh, joining us in spirit, if not in body, is Mr. Drew Cullingham, filmmaker. Um, beard enthusiast and uh, lover of L'Oreal shampoo, uh, Drew Cullingham. Um, he has sent me his list, so whilst he can't be here in person, he will be here um, on his list, which is cool. That's good. So we've got Drew with us on paper. Uh, I'm Why doing couldn't that. we have done that with Josh? Because uh, I only thought about it last night, to be fair. Oh, right. Fair <laughs> it's like, it literally was like 12 o'clock <coughs> last night. I was like, oh, actually, I could just use Drew's list. Um so, there we go. So, what we're going to do today, we are going to run through our top 10 films of the year. We are going to look at our hero, our villain, uh, our um, surprise of the year, our best worst films. Best worst films? I meant to say worst films, but I'd already started saying best. Um, I'm going to give you my annual awards, uh, and then we're going to look at next year's films. And there's a little quiz that Mr. Boyask has put on. He's promised me, unlike the last quiz, it won't run for 18 hours and be more complicated than the Magna Carta. Or Brexit plans. There you go, topical humour. Well, the Brexit right. plans aren't terribly complicated at the moment, are they? Well, we just don't have any. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so you do have a quiz, though, don't you, Russ? Uh, who's Russ? Um, Russ. Yes. Russ. Yes, I, do. I do have a quiz. And actually, I think it will go relatively swiftly. But I've also <laughs> been known to lie on many occasions. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, you That's have. That's true. You, know. um, you haven't got five quizzes, have you? <laughs> don't um, so, um... Also, just to note, uh, I know we say this every year, but when we're running through our list, guys, try not to say, oh, I had that as my number, because that does somewhat change. Fun, to well, the funny enough, Phil, we, we mitigated that on our show, our new show, by we've got something called the punt rule. Oh, OK. So, so if, for, for example, um, in your top 10, if, um, if Matt says his number 10 is Robocop, and Robocop Never. is number... Uh, Can I just say, how would Robocop only be number 10 of anything? <laughs> Um, how how would it be number? How, how would it, it? How would it be? Most how would, how would it be so? How would it be 10. so so low in, in the charts? Well, exactly. 10? Well, uh, it, it, the only reason I can think of is in use as an example of what I'm talking about. <laughs> uh, but you put it so low. Okay, so let's put, say Matt has put usual <laughs> suspects at number ten. What? Oh, I wouldn't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> That's a top five, easily. Okay, What's I, happening? I, I think we're not going to get anywhere today, are we? Andrew, carry on explaining the punt rule. Thank you. Right. So number, <laughs> number 10, let, let's say in, in some multi-level universe in a galaxy far, far away that someone called Matt has put something called the usual suspects at something in the position of number 10. <laughs> and I had put it at number four in my list. Right. So it's coming up later. So, right. Yeah. OK. So when Matt says, oh, my number 10 is usual suspects, I'll say punt. And that's it. 
and then later on, when I come to my number four, we all talk about it then. Oh, I don't want to lower the tone. Hang on, hang on. I don't want to lower the tone. But could we just say, you fucking punt? You <laughs> could say that. that as long fucking as you yeah, punt. punt. Yeah. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Fucking punt. No, wait, hang on. Thinking about it. Thinking about it. Not you fucking punt, because that's quite rude. Just fucking punt. Okay. Oh, right. It was to you that was rude, was it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that, yeah. That, yeah. That well, because you insinuate. It's directional. <laughs> you know. yes. Yeah, 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 exactly. Personal. Okay. Yeah, exactly. So we have the punt. Do you I like, like that? Or... Do you want to do that? Or... I like that. I think fucking punt is good. I like fucking punt. So we're going to keep the right, show fucking nice punt. And... Fair enough. We're going to keep the show we, nice can't co- we can't copyright. We can't um, breach copyright of the smoking lamb. So okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Let's kick off then. Uh, so we are going to start by listing our numbers ten to four, uh, because I'm conscious that we've stacked this quite quite. <clears throat> packed today so what i want to do 10 to 4 10 to 4 but what we'll go through what we'll do is i'll do my number 10 um and you can say like literally a couple of words isn't it 10 till 6 and we do the five like normal yeah Yeah, but we've got more Mm. content this time um and i'm just conscious tell you what right all right can we have one line on 10 to 6 and two lines on five and four yeah that's absolutely acceptable as you can tell we we plan these podcasts out perfectly (laughs) meticulous what is it we're doing doing again (laughs) so uh, i'll kick off with my number 10 for the year who are you who are you people shut up i've done my list in reverse uh in the wrong order on my bit of paper so um I, I almost gave you my number one. Uh, that was that was a disaster. <laughs> Drew's done it correctly. So Drew has put love and friendship at number ten. I punt. Uh, oh, oh, we're punting. Fucking punt. We're fucking punt punting. Punt, already. Yeah. Well, to be fair, we. I don't think we need to punt ten to four, do we? Because 10 nah, to six, it's too. No. <laughs> ten to six. We don't need to punt because we're only doing a couple of words. Okay, about fair it. enough. Fair enough. So right. number ten, love and friendship from Drew. Number ten from me is Eddie the Eagle. Ross. Uh-huh. Uh, Bloodfather. Oh, do you know what? Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <sighs> that was so close uh, to being in my top ten. Matt. Number ten, Bloodfather. Oh. Hey! And I've got to go. see this now. Jinx, I, de- I never got, I never got to see it. You have to say jinx, don't we? My God, shit. Bloodfather proves what I've always said, that despite being a horrific husband and a terrible racist, he's still a fucking great filmmaker. Can we spend an hour talking about Bloodfather? (laughs) Yes, and then maybe Hacksaw Ridge as well. (laughs) I I think Bloodfather is genuinely an excellent film. It just missed out on my top ten, but it's really good. Very good. Okay. Uh, My my number ten is Cafe Society. Okay. Uh, Mm. My number nine. I liked it. (laughs) uh, My number nine is Arrival. Drew's number nine is Eddie the Eagle. Yeah, good film. Good Ross? shout on that. Yeah, I, I love it, but it's not in my top ten. Uh, the Invitation, which I loved. Okay. Yeah, another good shout. Another good shout. Andrew? Hmm? Oh, or is it Matt next? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm mixing the order up. I'm, I'm, Just change I'm, it up. I'm, I'm oh, okay, right. Brother. My number nine is a brand new entry, a film I saw last night, very late, Bone Tomahawk. Ah. Oh, so not, uh, not Rogue One, then. <laughs> <laughs> let's not get into that just yet. Yeah, I know, yeah, I know, right? I'm sure that conversation will happen later. Matt, your number nine is Purge Election Year. Ooh, yes, yeah, I really enjoyed that. Really enjoyed it. best yeah. Purge film yet. Mm, great film. Uh, not you can, say, you can say a agree. quick line about each one if you. Yeah. If you want. Okay, Frank yeah. Grillo, and I said yes. Oh, yeah, fucking damn Brilliant. right. Uh, so Drew's number eight. I'm not 100 percent sure if this was this year, but it's a Netflix release. So it's a bit of a weird one. Beast of No Nation. He really that loved that. He that's te- like was two, isn't that, me for it. Isn't that, that was two last years? year. I thought it was, like, I thought it was two years uh, ago. Actually. No, I think our release might well be this oh, year. Yeah, okay. I think there's, there's a lot of that going on actually. Okay. Uh, no, it's last year, 16th of October. It's last. I'm sure it was. Yeah, doesn't count. Uh, well, I'm going to give it to him anyway because he's not here to, yeah. to debate he's it. Not but, to um, it yeah. So my number eight was, um, and actually this is only so low because the rest of the films in my top ten. I really like but I loved Doctor Strange I thought it was probably one of the best Marvel movies yet I actually positioned Doctor Strange out of my top 10 because I saw a couple of other films but I, it was in my top 10 until like two weeks ago yeah I, 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 loved, I, I loved, loved it. it I thought it was a really really yeah. strong film can uh, I just state can I just state for the record Doctor Strange was never in my top 10 <laughs> <laughs> it has divided people it has divided some people you have you, you surprised me Andrew uh, I loved it yeah Matt you're number 8 Number eight 
is where to invade next. Oh, I really that's like an that. interesting one. That was good. Yeah, I really yeah, I, I really liked it. It was a great film. It's see- nice to see Michael Moore back doing mm-hmm. uh, very tongue in cheek documentaries. Did you see Michael Moore in Trumpland? Yeah, I thought that was that, really what, TED Talk. Yeah, yeah, was. basically, yeah. Yeah, it's, I, found, I found it really boring. It's really boring. funny. Fahrenheit 9-11 came out just before the 2004 re-election of George Bush. <laughs> and Michael Moore really didn't want him to get re-elected. Mm. He made a film and fucked up. Yeah. And Trump land is the same thing. So anyone thinking of running in 2020 or 2024, if Michael Moore makes a film about you slagging you off, you'll probably win. Yeah. Michael well, did you? Was wasn't there also that thing you've been trumped to or something? There was like two mm-hmm. oh, documentaries. Yeah, the, the, yeah. Yeah, Follow the, up to that. The, the yeah. Scottish golf place. Right, that's right. Yeah, yeah. you've been Trump Trump is excellent. It's yeah, really apparently good. they're both great. Apparently both yeah, great. first, first, one, I haven't seen the second one. First one is is really good, and I really like, I really like the fact that I can't. I don't know if it comes from that or it comes from something else, but there's a great moment, and you can look at it online, where there's like Trump's doing an interview, and there's just a woman standing behind him with a sign saying Trump is a cunt. That's that's <laughs> my friend. <laughs> That's my friend. Really? Godley. Yeah, she's, she's my, my mate, yeah. Amazing. It, back in June, she went out there, Trump is a cunt. She actually toured the, um, she did a stand-up show in London in November called Trump is a cunt. And that, brought amazing. the sign with her. That is oh, one of the most amazing shots where you see Trump yeah. and behind just this <laughs> sign of him just saying Trump is a cunt. And I, it's just yeah. like, that is amazing. Anyway, we won't go into politics just yet. Uh, who hasn't done the number eight? Andrew, you haven't done your number eight, have you? I right? haven't either. Okay. Uh, go on, Ross. Uh, Hell or high water. Oh, pun. Mm. Uh, legitimate pun. Okay, yeah. not seen it yet. Yeah. Um, Andrew, what? you're number eight. That's good. My my number eight is Don't Breathe. It's yeah, great. I like. I yeah. really like it's Don't great. Breathe. It's not yeah, my top very... ten, but it's it, it's it's another one of those great low budget horrors. I'm sure there's one we're probably all going to mention at some point. Maybe mm. not Ross, because maybe Ross may have jumped it, jumped the year slightly. Oh, I don't know about that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll have, get to that. We'll get to that. May have just slightly <coughs> jumped the year by, you know, about nine months, but never mind. Um, Con- okay. Controversial. Controversial. So that was our number eight. Eight. Number seven for Drew was Snowden, uh, which I haven't seen yet. That is that is not top ten material. It's a it's an all right film, but it's not top ten. Um, I've heard good. I've heard good things. Right? It is. It's all right. It's perfectly fine. But it's just. It's missing suspense, really, and mm. surprisingly so from an Oliver Stone film. So my number seven is Deadpool, and I swear uh, to God, hunt. it, it was hunt. higher. Hunt. Yeah, I had a feeling hunt. it would be. It was hunt. higher, yeah. but there are yeah. three or four films this year that have just blown me away. But Deadpool, I fucking love that film. Uh, Ross, uh, Kubo with the two strings. Oh, which yeah, is I just still amazing. haven't seen it yeah. yet. It's I so amazing. want to see it. I've got, I've got it to watch over Christmas. Uh, it's beautiful. Matt. Yeah, that that was very nearly in my top ten, Cooper. Mm. Matt, your number seven is Eddie the Eagle. Cool. Yeah, I'm really gutted. I, can I, can I just say I, I'm sort of gutted I didn't put it in my top ten because it was in my top ten for at least six months. It's yeah, me I, too. I, love, I love that film. I love that and film. I was at the love screening it. with Ross as well. Yeah, it's good, man. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's, it's very good. Yeah. It was a beautifully made, yeah, lovely, and it just shows that um, uh, Dexter Fletcher is he's you know, a great director. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he did he did Sunshine on Leaf, which is yeah, genuinely beautiful. one of my top and Wild Bill. And Wild, Wild Bill's Bill. great. Yeah, but he's Wild great Bill's director. great. Sunshine on Leaf was just one of those films where you you put it down on paper and you go, right, so it's a film about some northern guys singing Proclaimers songs. Yes, exactly. It's like, I am so beyond out, it's not (laughs) even funny. And then you watch it and you're like, holy fuck, within two minutes that film had me and it didn't let me go. It was... was, I think it's probably in my top 25 films of all time, weirdly enough. That's pretty serious. That's serious. It's, it's yeah. just one of those films that, you know, sometimes you get a film that just for no logical reason connects with you. That was it for me. Um, so over to Andrew. Yeah. Uh, my number seven is uh, The Punt, Hell or High Water. Okay. That's great. Phil, you, you need to see Phil, you need <coughs> to yeah, see Yeah, you it. need to. Phil, you'll, you'll, you'll love it. it. Yeah. It's really good. I'm making a yeah. list, right? Um, and I'm checking it twice. <laughs> and I'm going to find out which one um, oh, I'm making dear. a list of all these films that will be mentioned today uh, that I haven't seen. And the reason is, I was, I was saying this to Andrew on a, on a chat last night, um, I've seen about 40 less films this year than I did the previous year. 
So I've had I've been really selective of what I've seen this year, and there have been a couple of random ones, and it's been a massive because of the age of my daughter. There's been a massive increase in kids' films, um, which isn't a bad thing, but um, you know, uh, yeah. So it's been it's been uh, an interesting year in terms of that. So uh, Drew's number six was uh, oh god, Anomalisa. I can never say that. Hmm. It's good. Uh, yeah, that might appear later. Oh, I, I, I figured that could be a potential pun. Uh, my number six. Uh, was Ross's number one in? T- <laughs> it was Ross's number one in 2015, and now it's down to number six in Phil's 2016 list. That was my dodgy local DJ. Green room. Punt. 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 Yeah. Punt. You can't have it two years running. Ross. Oh, That's just not yes, fair. I can. <laughs> We're going to get into an argument. It's going to be an argument. No, actually, I'm going to let you because, right? If if you pitch a movie to me and it says low budget. Kind of, you know, trapped in a house type movie starring Patrick Stewart as a neo Nazi. Mm. It's the exact opposite to, to the pitch of um, Sunshine on Leaf. I'm so in that it's just fucking ridiculous. I fucking adored Green Room. It was brilliant. And when it kicks off, man, it kicks off. Yeah. So, yeah. So more, I, more, late, more later. More later. <laughs> Uh, Drew, uh, sorry, not Drew, Andrew. <laughs> Fucking Drew's not here. Drew, you're not. Uh, Andrew! He gets to go first. <laughs> what is happening? I don't know what you should. I just disappear. Maybe I'll get more airtime. I'm um, a little bit out of practice, as you can tell. Andrew, you're number six. My number six is War on Everyone. Ooh, I've not even heard of it. I really love it. Oh, I love oh, it. it. Desperate. Really, really good. John Michael McDonough, who did The Guard and Calvary. Uh, okay, okay, so, so. I thought the guard was massively overrated. So, oh, I love the guard. I love you like him, Bruges? I love him, Bruges. In Bruges is great. Well, there you go, and brother. Like this. And Calvary is brilliant. Yeah, Calvary, Calvary is really, really brilliant. I'm not saying Calvary. I thought the guard was really Calvary's overrated. I didn't hate the guard. I just thought it was a bit overrated. Hmm. I think you'll like this one, Warren. Everyone, it's just uh, two very dodgy cops not giving a shit right away. I, I feel. I mean, yeah. we talked about this. I talked about this with Andrew yesterday. It, I feel it's very similar to another film that's coming up later, uh, but I still really, really loved it. Like, I, I really, I really it's enjoyed. It's the better it. of those two films. I, I don't see that. <laughs> I don't see. Ooh, it. Okay, and that's what's going to make for a good debate. Like. <laughs> no, 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 we're, we're heading I'm... down debate aisle. I think. Um, so let's have Matt. Your number six. Is don't breathe, which yeah, we good, mentioned good earlier. Good shout. Don't breathe. Loved again. it again, along with green room. Don't breathe. Purge election year and a few others. There were some cracking low budget horrors this year. Yeah, there were. Yeah, I, mean, this I still. Was... I, I will say just briefly. Don't breathe. I really loved it, and I just. <laughs> I still feel the final, like the last act, feels a bit. Mm, it, don't know. It, I still it, like. I didn't agree. I think it's. I think it's yeah. great right the way through, and I, I love don't. the tone that it takes at the end. It, yeah. the I don't know. Joke. It's brilliant. I really, really like it. By the way, I'm not. Uh, it's not that big an attraction. I just feel there's some bits at the end. I'm just a bit like. Um, yeah. I, I don't disagree. I think that, that there are some. Without spoiling it, sort of thing. Towards the end. Yeah, I just feel it goes a bit. Too, and I think it, and, um, yeah. it could have gone in a different direction, but I, I, I thought, that, but I, I think the statement this year with, with films like that and Green Room and, like we said, um, Purge Three, Purge Three, and, and loads of other films like that, mm. they were genuinely, it genuinely was one of the more interesting films for like low budget. Movie and movie. actually, actually, well, actually can I, can I, well, hang on, uh, hang on. I'd also can, like to say Bone Tomahawk falls well, into that. I was going to say, well. I was going to say, can we also include the invitation in that? Because there's a yeah. very, it's very, 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 very good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I've, not, I've also, not seen the invitation. Oh, and also for anyone who hasn't seen it, he never died. It's not in my top ten, but in terms of genre and low budget, etc., etc., Henry yeah, Rollins, like thing. it is <laughs> excellent. Okay, could you please Excellent. all stop adding to my list of films I need to watch? <laughs> no, no, it's just, it's just because it's just because you were mentioning that. that yeah, no, I'm aspect. joking. It's, otherwise, like this time next year, we're going to be doing it, and I'm only going to be able to talk about 2016 films. Mm. Uh, who have we missed off? Drew, uh, Ross, have you done your number six? No, number six. No, uh, Train to Busan. Yeah, which good actually, film. which um, actually, <sighs> oh, right. well, I was going to say, I was going to say, in in looking at my top five. Train to Busan could have easily been in my top five. E- like, easily. It's just, again, preference and opinion and feeling of the type. You know, I, I could change my top ten around quite well, normally, easily. Normally you do. You normally know. your top ten mm. consists of ten, uh, 20 films anyway. So. No, I don't mean it like that. I just mean, as in, <laughs> I just mean as in you could reposition any, almost anything in my top ten. Yeah. And it wouldn't well, be it wouldn't be weird if you see it. Other than my number one, my top mm. five are almost 
like interchangeable. interchangeable. Yeah, yeah. So Train to uh, Busan is beautiful. It's great. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll add that to. to, to you me. haven't seen Train to no, Busan? No, I oh, what's wrong oh. with you, Phil? Oh man, honestly, honestly. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I know. I've, I've yeah, oh, inc- incidentally, uh, Train to Busan uh, was shot in South Korea about halfway through the film. I'm not going to spoil anything, but halfway through the film, they stop at a station. And um, I've been there. My in laws live right down, waving. right oh. down the road. No, 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 I wasn't. Had to fight was zombies shooting. and everything. But it's really, <laughs> it's really weird seeing such a clean and serene um station because uh, there's one bit where they're going down an escalator i'll say no more um and seeing it run overrun by those zombies is absolutely bizarre um but you know, the koreans know what they're doing when they come to horror it's, it's a very brilliant film. oh and yeah. if anyone hasn't seen the wailing that's definitely right stop no it. more recommendations <laughs> sorry i'm, Just up, to, it's the I'm same up to thing. five already i'm getting <laughs> nothing done and i've still got 10 films i haven't watched okay so that was our numbers 10 to 6. So we'll go into slightly more detail for 5 and 4. Um, and then we'll crack on to the next section. So uh, Drew's number 5 was Hunt for the Wilder People. And I'm punting that for Andrew. I'm gutted. I'm gutted that I haven't seen it yet. I was trying uh, to watch actually, it yesterday. Actually, it, it's not in my top 10, but it is a very good film. Okay. Very good. okay. Uh, uh, that's good. Uh, so my number <laughs> 5 was a film that actually uh, I, I fucking I fucking love this film, The Big Short. Mm. Mm. I really um, liked it, but it's just not top ten for me. I, I thought out of the two more kind of headline Oscar films this year between that and Spotlight, um, mm. on reflection, The Big Short is the one I'd actually watch again, whereas Spotlight, I appreciated it was fine, it was good film, but I'd never watch it again. That's it. That's fair. I think Spotlight. Once yeah. you've seen it, you've got it. And and for Big Short, I, without sounding too trivial, it is. <coughs> it does have the pace and the feel of a comedy. It does. Big and Short, like like so, you could kind of get involved in that. Yeah. Repeated times, I guess. It was like it was like a slightly more light-hearted version of Wolf of Wall Street. Well, much better. A lot. A lot of. I, I don't know if anyone's actually um, help, you know admitted to this, but a lot of the Big Short went right over my head. <laughs> I didn't oh, understand very much. Oh, I don't I didn't know. I even bother with it. I thought it was explained. Look, if Margot Robbie is explaining something to you in, in, a, in a fucking hot tub, <laughs> whatever the hell she was in, I was with rapt attention paying attention but, to but, yeah, yeah, no, the way, that. Was if I had to pick film, two, unfortunately. If I had to pick two two scenes of the year, they'd probably both involve Margot Robbie. <laughs> so, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, I, you know, it, I, I work in that industry, so a lot of it kind of made sense to me, but there was a lot that just went over my head as well. So, um, but no, so I, I really enjoyed the big short, uh, and yeah, Margot Robbie in the bath, always good for me. Ross, your number yes. five. Uh, it's Deadpool. Um, it could have been high, uh, sometimes, but I just, my, my only flaw without getting into too much, because I'm sure we can all say something about Deadpool. It's just brilliant. Like it's just yeah. funny as fucking anarchic and but for Ryan Reynolds and film jokes were all great. And my only flaw, I don't know about anyone else, but my main problem with it is I don't get who keeps casting Ed Screen in films. Oh, he's as for, yeah. lead, as for lead villain, as for lead vill- like as a lead villain. He's like, I'm not terrible. saying he could have been. Film. Yeah, he really isn't. I will say he's least terrible in Deadpool. Like I've seen him in others. <laughs> Transporter <laughs> Field and Tiger House. Oh. He's absolutely awful in Deadpool. He's just not good. Yeah, and particularly as a lead villain, I just don't. I just don't see how that one no. thing, like how they got that so wrong. If you, yeah, it, it's because the I casting just, in it is is superb. It's on point. Yeah, it's on point. Like Everyone it's, cast in that film is yeah perfect. Other than <laughs> he, he, I, they just I wanted a he was cheap it. English villain. That's all it was. But, but he's just so... not even. He just doesn't breathe. He just doesn't breathe. And I don't. I don't even want to be nasty about him. I've got no beef with him. He's just. He's been hired to do a job, and he you know he does whatever he does. But there's just nothing there. Whereas everyone else, generally. Like you say, pretty much perfect casting. Like, yeah. perfect. No, which is a rare word to, to use. Deadpool you know. was a great film. It, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's how I wish more superhero films were made. Because, you know, I'm sure this will come up in conversation at some point. But superhero films have become very safe. Um, or predictable. You don't Deadpool, say. <laughs> Deadpool was... Really good. It just, it just, it was everything that when I used to pick up a comic book, I loved. Deadpool is two thirds of a good film, and and the entire second act is a, is dead in the water. 
You mean like the whole the flashback heat? The whole the whole middle. I mean, half the opening, and half. I, the can, opening, I can sort of see that a little bit. The I opening credits. Uh, pro, I, I was like, I was totally on board. I was like, yes, finally, we've mm. got a Marvel film that I like, like that might get more of, more than a six out of ten. You know what I mean? And then, mm. it, you know, and and actually, the first act, you know, I was really giddy with excitement. I was really enjoying it. And then Ed Screen came on. The whole thing mm. just sank, <laughs> mm. and then it perked up a little bit at the end. And, you know, there's a couple of spikes during the second act, but it, that really let it down. Ever since it's been available to watch at home, I've watched the opening credits maybe 12 times. Wow. And I've stopped, <laughs> and I've stopped the film shortly after it because I just can't stand the middle. That is a superb. So, that that yeah. opening credit bit is, is yeah. superb. So, well, the uh, fact that it was originally a joke as well, it was just a joke. Yeah. And then they left it in. <laughs> it's brilliant. Yeah. So over to Matt, your number five. My number five was the same as Drew, Hunt for the Wilder People. Mm. Just a beautifully mm. shot film. Um, it really reminded me of sort of Son of Rambo. It's yeah, that's got, right. Yeah. It's got a fantastic performance by uh, the young lad who's playing uh, Ricky Baker. And it's just a really nice sort of coming-of-age film. Uh, Sam Neill's great in it as the grumpy, um, illiterate farmer who... Uh, helps bring the boy out of himself and uh, comes out of himself as well. It's just a really, really good film. Cool. Yeah, fantastic film. It really is very good. The number six of my list of things I need to watch this year. <laughs> Don't I, na- Naturally, I won't be going to work for the rest of the week. I'll just be watching movies. And I, I do want to say I am genuinely a bit annoyed at myself that I didn't watch it. I really have been trying to get to it and it just, yeah. Oh, I, I, I stayed all... up till about half one the other morning watching it because I right. was just so enthralled with it. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Really good. So, over to Andrew, your number five, sir. My number five is a film that's been mentioned, I think, on Drew's list, uh, Love and Friendship. Yep. Whit Stillman's film. It's uh, Kate Beckinsale, um, Chloe, what's her face from Kids? Savenny. Uh, oh, Savenny, that's it. Um, Stephen Fry, Tom Bennett, a, a, a great on If we're talking about perfect performances, this is one of them. It's a, it's like 88 <laughs> minutes long. It's, my, I think, my f- first ever U-rated film in a top 10. Um, so you ra- rated you, really? I think it's rated wow. you, yeah. Wow. Um, and it, there's no swearing, there's no sex, there's no violence, but the... Boring. I was going to say, how did they film it one time? <laughs> You'll be telling yeah. me there's no ninjas next. I mean, that's <laughs> there, there's half a ninja. No, um, oh, okay. The, uh, <laughs> but the chemistry between the uh, the characters and just the, the rapport that they've got, and the whole thing looks lovely. It's a wonderful film. Cool. Uh, Drew's totally right to have it in his top ten. I completely agree. Awesome. Um, so we'll quickly blast through our number four. Well, we'll quickly blast through, but we'll go for down number four. And uh, Drew, number four, has Hail Caesar, a film that yeah, I, I really was... liked it. All right. I really liked it. I think at the end, I think the final act does let it down a bit. Yeah, I, if I'm honest. I agree with you. But on I really that. liked it. Really it's not liked in my it. Top... Woodford, it were so simple. It's not in my Amazing. top 10. It's probably not in my top 20 yeah. for the year, but I did, I did really enjoy it. Um, mm. For a modern day Cohen film, it, it, was, it was fine. But yeah, the last, the last act wasn't um, the best. Uh, my number four was my number one for a long oh. chalk of the year. In fact, it was my number one up until about two months ago. And uh, it was my number one from when I saw it. It was my number one just all through the year. And it's Room. Yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. I loved yeah. Room. I thought not only was it superbly acted not only was it just you know a beautiful story but also in terms of the cinematography and the technical side of it Mm. it is amazing it genuinely when you go back to the room after they escape the room and i think i can kind of yeah i think we can probably guess that's that's a fair assumption they're going to escape at some point um just just the the way it's shot the way it, it i don't know i just really connected with the film i really liked it uh, i thought it was worthy of um brie larson's win for best actress it was a damn good film so my number four is room matt your number four. By, I, by, well, by rights it should be on my top 10 but i didn't want to include a bunch of oscar stuff so i just chose mm. one of that range yeah and that was it otherwise it would look too too much like 2015 otherwise mm. After Phil's recommendation the other week about it, I tried watching Room twice 
last week and fell Wait, asleep both times. Well, one one thought, after another. I you want to watch it two times. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I tried watching it twice in a row. No, okay, I, watched, I tried watching it on two separate evenings and fell asleep both times. It, uh, it just Why? couldn't you hold were tired my attention. Or you just didn't like it. <sighs> Probably a mixture of both, but it just didn't grip me. Um, the way I thought it should. Philistine. So it was no, it was no bad boy Bubby. Put it that way. <laughs> no, that um, is true. Bad boy Bubby is is um, it's kind of the same film, but <laughs> yeah. Which is the, why I thought, oh, well, if it's anything like that, yeah. Stick I'll... with it, but Matt, stick with Room though. Keep. I mean, it's not bad boy Bubby. It doesn't come anywhere close to that. But um, but stick with it. It's it's very gripping. It it picks up. Let's put it that. It way. does. No, I'll, I'll, I'll give it one more attempt. I yeah. Think. Um. So You're Matt, glad you... your number four. Four. Uh, Train to Busan, or Busan, however yes, you want to great. pronounce it. Um, so good. Uh, excellent. Already covered it, but fantastic zombies, um, fast running zombies a lot of the times as well, and just the way that they sort of cascade over each other and trample everything in okay. their wake is brilliant. Genuinely, but also, I, I was but like. But also, but also, I cried a number of times. What's yes! That? Oh, there the was the zombies a, is yeah. one thing. The zombies is one like the actual zombie stuff is, and it's all brilliant. Like brilliant. There, there are a few the moments that do oh. bring tears to say, your eyes, you... and the deaths in it are. Don't, yeah. don't give away too much because oh, yeah, yeah. I've, no, no, I've no. gone from not one, not even knowing what this film is to you need to, see, to, say, to say, hearing the term zombies. A lot, of, I mean. a lot of people have said Mike Parkin. Uh, said he cried as well. I d- I didn't get that. <laughs> the, the film wasn't that kind of. Tonally, it wasn't along those lines for me. Oh, the end, though, as well. The end, oh, even oh, the end. beautiful. Yeah, I mean, oh, I, I, yeah, really yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't get me wrong, but it, but it is a bit I'm too sorry. long. It is flawed. Yeah, it is. You it know, is. So I, I agree that it is definitely. I definitely agree that it is. It is too long, but I never yeah. got bored. If you see what I mean, like I never. No, I mean, I never yeah. Wow, well, that's not bad. On the uh, on the former film exploitation bingo chart, uh, I've only just filled in that someone saying it was too long. So that's, <laughs> that's quite good. Normally, that's like yeah. like the first two minutes of a conversation we have. We but, did have a running time thing from Andrew, though. We had a yeah, running time thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but so, I agree. But I agree with that. I agree with that sentiment, regardless. So. Thank, thank you, Andrew. Yeah, your thanks. number four. My number four has been talked about already. Will be talked about a little bit here, and will be talked about loads very soon. <laughs> 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 and I'm to- and I'm just talking about last year's podcast. My number four is Green Room. Um, fucking awesome. Which is <laughs> which, which is great. <laughs> I have to say for the record, and I know Ross is going to jump in and go, but 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 I know that um, uh, in the, in the pantheon, well, the, the duo of uh, Jeremy Saulnier's two films now, Blue Ruin and Green Room. I would like to state that I preferred Green, uh, Blue Ruin over Green Room. But that's not to take anything away from Green Room. It's it's um, very fast and frenetic. I'm sure everyone here must have seen both of these films by now. Blue Ruin's amazing. Yeah, Ross and I, it is amazing. Yeah, Blue Ruin is the best. It actually made me go and check out Blue Ruin a third time after I'd seen Green Room. And I said to you yesterday, Ross, that there's an mm. event that happens exactly like 52 minutes into yes. both Blue Ruin yes. and Green Room. It's the same thing. In really? Blue Ruin, either, yeah. yeah. In yeah. Blue Ruin, the guy, he kidnaps a guy, puts him in the trunk of the car, <laughs> and from out of nowhere, the fat older you brother... Don't, don't say the thing that happens, though. You can't say the yeah, thing Yeah, don't, don't give spoilers, just in case someone hasn't seen it. Okay, actual. well, anyway, anyway, something, something fairly... Um, Traumatic? Terrible, <laughs> so, something fairly terrible happens to someone... Traumatic which makes pretty you jump fair, out yeah. Of, Traumatic, yeah. Yeah, no, that I... makes you jump out of your seat in Blue Ruin. Yeah. And in Green Room, exactly the same time, the same thing happens <laughs> to someone behind the bar. Do you know what I? Yeah. I, I probably am. I'm, I play on Ross's side with this. That I think Green Room's the better film out of the two. But, but I, they are. But yeah, that's like, like saying that's, yeah, that's that's like trying to pick your favourite of your two kids. It's it's like you know you love them both. Very easy. <laughs> I mean, I will on the strength on the strength of these two films. I would, no matter what the details are, I would go and see the next film directed by Jeremy. Oh, oh yeah, well, yeah, no yeah, question. Yeah. Yes. Well, yeah, no question. The first film was Blue Ruin. The second one was Green Room. It, the third one going to be Red Car Hope or so. something like. That. I, 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 I don't car. see it if it was if it was an empty room painted red, and I'm just going to stick the camera. Out we the should have we should have a little bit of a bet then. We should have a little bit of a bet. The next film Jeremy Saulnier does, whatever it is, Purple Violin or something, whatever, I reckon 52 minutes into the yeah. film, someone, somewhere, out of nowhere, <laughs> will suddenly explode. 
Can I? Um, can I? I, I, want, I want it to be called Chartreuse Nightstand. <laughs> what the fuck? Oh dear. Right, <laughs> Ross, right. Your number four, sir. My number four is a film uh, much like Train to Busan, because Train to Busan and this film were the two that punted out Doctor Strange and another title. But I don't know if someone else has picked, so I don't want to say it yet. Uh, from my top ten, and it's Sing Street, which I. I, like love like i can't even quite verbalize how much i love sing street it is unbelievable and dare i say there are some comparisons with sunshine on leaf oh, okay. in terms of in terms of i don't mean they're the same i don't mean they're the same but it, first of all it's a musical but it's a musical but you don't it, it, it kind of becomes a musical <laughs> if that makes sense like the film develops into a musical yeah. the, the, the song and dance sequences are amazing it's funny as fuck um, dramatic moments from I don't know if anyone else has seen Sing Street but it is absolutely fucking awesome like it's okay. awesome. and again it's not a film but if you say it's from the guy who did Once and Begin Again John Carney which I, I like those films too I, I, I won't say much more than that I do like those films a lot this film has just blew me away and Phil the, the comparison I can make and again it's nothing like that film but in terms of how good it is is like Pride like it was oh, just yeah, yeah, yeah. fucking yeah. amazing it's amazing I'll go, I'll go with that I love Pride it's amazing Pride, great film. yeah and like I say it's not the same I just mean in terms of the type like like the feel and the feel good and the the way it works and, you know what I mean and, and it's not like Deadpool or fucking Hell or High Water or, you know what I mean it's it's own okay. thing cool that's very rare good yeah just recommend it highly okay excellent so that's our t- 10 to top 4 so that's good so we're next going to cover off our villain of the year. Now, I'm guessing <laughs> some people might have the same person for this uh, or the same thing. Uh, I'm going to go with Drew to kick off. Uh, Drew, totally unoriginal, but death. What, uh, <laughs> Every three year we punt. have that. I, I, I did that punt. two years ago. <laughs> okay. and yeah, punt, actually, punt it, for me, kind of, as well. Okay. Yeah, and it's my villain again this year. Yeah, well. so why, don't we just call, why don't we just call it... This in memoriam, yeah. and yeah. not villain of the year because it's always villain of the year. Yeah, <laughs> I don't re- think anyone's got my villain of the year. Okay. By the way, Death I'm pretty has sure. Been I'm a sure. Motherfucker, this year. Yeah, it genuinely has been a motherfucker. Um, I feel like I have to change one of my other categories then because we're about to talk about death. <laughs> 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 but, so, <laughs> so that's 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 Drew. My villain of the year is DC films. And Actually, can I, can I, wait, 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 before you say DC films, yeah, uh, because this is a thing that has come up and it was one of my, it's not DC, it's Warner Brothers. No, okay, okay. Because DC so, haven't, DC haven't done yeah, yeah, wrong. Yeah, okay, so. It's Warner it, Brothers, but, but, unfortunately. Okay. So, but Warner own DC, so it's. But, I'm okay, just saying, so. it's not, it's not like Marvel, you know what no, I mean? No, no, like, no, it's but not, DC yeah. stroke, okay, fair point. DC it's Warner Brothers. stroke Warner Brothers. Right. I, I didn't hate Batman versus Superman. I thought it was okay. Um, the extended cut was not needed. Suicide Squad was was terrible. They can't... They just... They have the best villains. They have some of the best characters. Yet they can't even make one decent film. And actually, the villain of the year would probably... I've been saying this all year. Well, all decade. But the the, the problem is... (laughs) The problem is it probably spins out further. If you if you go into the minutia, it, it's it's DC have got great characters. Warner Brothers can't do it right. But the person that's to blame mostly seems to be Zack Snyder, who has his fingers in everything. And Actually, because he's a Snyder, Zack Snyder. I'm sorry about this, but Zack Snyder and Christopher Nolan, because they're both yeah. In, yeah. in lead you know, in lead roles <laughs> in that situation, unfortunately. And, and, and to make matters worse. Chris Nolan did The Dark Knight, which I think is one of the best superhero films uh, I, available. And also, Zack Snyder did Watchmen, which I still... I, I love Watchmen. No, I love Watchmen. No, I love Watchmen. Yeah, I'm with Matt no, on that. Not. But, Zack but, Snyder's but, done but, one no, 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 good no, no, film. No. But he did no. do Dawn of the Dead. He yes, that's Dawn. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Dawn of the Dead is the only good Can I, But also, on this point, though, it's interesting to note that Jeff Johns has taken over the DC Universe, yeah, so who is one of the best DC writers, yet, in, and he did the TV stuff as well, yet, so yet, that's exciting. It is, but then you then you note that Flash has lost, what, four directors now? Yeah, but I just I, I, I look at all those individual films as just, just take them as they come, but, but um, I just... 
like putting Jeff Johns in is a very, very savvy decision. It is. They actually so I'm hoping that they wrote the script for Suicide Squad in what three weeks, and it's like yeah, it's yeah no it showed. fucking shit. They, what there was a script? Fuck yeah, I know, right? Yeah. Um, well, we'll come to that later on. Yeah, again, I'm, I'm sure. sure we will. Yeah, um, it was, you know, so so Warner Brothers, DC, Zack Snyder, Chris Nolan, mm. that whole thing. It should. It should be better than Marvel, but what they're trying to do is copy Marvel, and they're doing a and doing and they're trying to do it quicker, and that's the problem. That's and the other Marvel, problem. They're, whether, they're, not, they're not taking the t- yeah. Whether Andrew, you know, I know your thoughts on this, but the rest of the universe, Marvel make well reviewed, well received, critically and commercially successful films. They yeah, choose interesting AKA, AKA safe, as you said. No, no, I don't think they're all. I don't think they are. Not all safe. Of them. I think Doctor Strange wasn't safe. Yeah, yeah Doctor Strange. They are. Guardians. Are all fucking safe. Guardians true. wasn't safe. Name well, me Guardians a Marvel. Safe. Name me a Marvel movie that doesn't feature a superhero who wins at the end. Off okay. you go. Yeah, but that's yeah, but that's that's yeah, that's, that's no. Andrew, name me an action no, that film. Is the point. Andrew, name me an action film that doesn't feature that. Yeah, exactly. I can name you several action films where 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 the the good guy dies. Okay, but that's good. Yeah, but he still usually achieves his goal. Yeah. Or you know what I mean, or... though. I mean, look, yeah. come on. Same, you can't. Com- same... You can't compare. You can't compare Marvel to something like Universal or, or MGM. That's <laughs> that, that's not. A... You can. No, you can. You can. can, you can as a... No, hang on. You can. can. You can. As a... Hang on. You can as a studio model. Of course you can. You as, can no, absolutely. no. As a studio model. But that's what we're talking studio. about. We're not talking about their fucking. Your problem is, Andrew. You we're see about, that each we're talking Marvel about, film we're talking about is a content. Marvel film. You don't see it as actually each of these films sit very different. in a genre. Uh, can, I, can I just say, in my defence, that I do see the films. But hang on, but hang on. What's the difference between Marvel and say the Bond franchise? It's the same. I well, mean, the I, I'm not arguing the case the, for the Bond the franchise only either. Is, I'm just especially I'm just after using... Spectre. No, no, same yeah, yeah, Hitler. Yeah. That's, a, that's another. That's another. You're absolutely right. In fact, I always put, <laughs> but just, I always put but my villain about of the concept. year. I always put, put my villain of the year as Spectre because I still I don't, cringe every time. I don't want to talk. I don't want anyone to mention that film ever again. Like, no, 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 no. Stop <laughs> talking about that. Yeah. yeah. Um, you don't need to talk about it. At the end, of, at the end of the day, I think Marvel have to up their game. We had a conversation about this the other day on on our new show, and I said that there, there's one thing that really sticks out about Marvel now. Not only does the new franchisee live to survive and win at the end, that would be one thing to keep the franchise going. It's got worse now. They live to survive at the end and spawn three other franchise opportunities mm. as well. Yeah, but that's and, the profit and motive. It, that's and it, the profit motive. Does it, does it, does it, does it matter if each look, film is good? This isn't a profit. This isn't a profit podcast. This is a how much did you enjoy a fucking film podcast? Yeah, and and if they're not... all going to have that same template. I would like to remind you, Phil. About a year ago, you were making the same complaint that the superhero films were starting yeah, to get. Hold on, hold on. Oh, I, I, then, I was, and then Ant Man came along, which was a heist movie, which I loved. Ooh. Admittedly, yeah, Civil so. War was I was less keen on. It had its well, moments. You mean Avengers? You mean Avengers two like point? That. You mean Avengers two point five? But yeah, I, yeah. I still like. I still like. But it. then but Doctor was, Strange yeah. comes along and completely blows it out of the water. Again. No, it completely does exactly the same fucking thing every other Marvel movie did. But and the other thing about Doctor Strange, as long as as long as as long as romantic comedy does, Phil, as long as Doctor Strange exists, the Avengers aren't needed. Because you can just rewind back time and kill all their mums. Don't well, spoil it. I ain't seen it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure. I'm sure. Doctor, Str- is- Doctor Strange is a cunt. That's what he is. Yeah, he's, he's a lazy that. prick sitting around in his fucking underpants watching X Hamster, while all the other all the other wankers out there having to go to China to fight. You know, low yeah, hung hang people. On, or whatever hang, on, his name hang, is. On, hang on, he does martial arts and stuff, so just leave it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but, that's, but Doctor Strange <laughs> ruins Marvel. If he can do, rewind time like Superman, then then what's the point? What's the point? He's it's a prick. I, it's not, it's not I, 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 I don't see Doctor fine. Strange. I don't see Doctor Strange going back to Civil War at the aircraft hangar and and helping out. No, he's a prick. He's off in I, fucking Taiwan. Yeah, paid. but that's kind of the point of Doctor Strange that he is oh, a prick. Oh come on! Oh no, fuck! So if, this had been, if this had been if this had been any film outside of the Marvel fucking tumor. Yeah, no one would buy it, right? In Hell or High Water, boat, any of the other films we've mentioned, if there was a superpower that could have eradicated all their ills and all their problems, that guy would be a prick for not doing it. But Is we it... allow Marvel this no. fucking get-out. Hang on, hang on, hang on. It's just, it's, yeah, guys, it's just, just a film. 
<laughs> no, that's not. No, 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 Ross, the problem is. It's been the, a prob- the problem is the, pro- the problem is Ross. It's not just one film, is it? It's several films clogging up four <laughs> screens out of ten and not playing I Daniel Blake because of it. That's it's well. Problem. It's it's well good though. <laughs> yeah, Andrew. Andrew. The problem is right. And ultimately, if I Daniel Blake and I haven't seen it, but if I Daniel Blake was a genuine breakout film, it is. It and it would. Earn its right and earn its screen, and if it if it connects with people, it would do that. The difference oh, is no, the Marvel oh, films. On. It do. has done. Hang on, hang on. No, 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 no. Money talks and bullshit. No, war. no. Marvel yeah. have got, got the stranglehold. The Marvel have got the stranglehold over all the cinemas. Because let's people forget, don't let's not to forget. See it. The View Cinema used to be called the Warner Village. They make their films with their own studios, their own money, and pump it into their own cinemas, and then pump it onto their own TV channels but, and Netflix streaming sites. That's all they do. They no, they don't stand a fucking chance. They don't. That's why we have seven and a half screens. That's why why Stranger Things... Hold on. That's why Stranger (laughs) Things was the biggest success story of this year. It wasn't because... What's that got to do with what we're talking about? It wasn't because it was produced by Marvel. It wasn't because it was on Netflix. It was because it was really fucking good. Word of mouth got around and every fucker started to watch it. Have you clipped around another conversation you had two weeks ago with someone else? No. I'm, this I'm is really, saying what's this had... got to do with what we're talking about? You're talking it, about Stranger Things yeah. and TV. What's no, no, that got to do with it, films? Because something that is, in, that is incredibly good with no pre-hype whatsoever can break out and be incredibly successful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, how many screens did it get in front of in Captain America Civil War when that came out of? None. It was a TV show. I'm not talking about Stranger Things or TV. But, Andrew, Andrew the TV about, is that. even worse. I'm talking about... No, yeah, TV's yeah. even worse because whereas there might be 10 films out in a week, I don't there care are a thousand TV. TV shows. I don't care about TV. Did you not hear what my my opening argument was that we've got fucking seven and a half screens out of ten showing Rose Cafe One Star Wars story. It's great. Yeah, and we and because, because of it, it's one of the best films of, of it, the year. And, and hang on, can we, hang on, can we go back a second here? Because we this don't is actually, have any decent stuff playing. That's Disney though. Like Disney owns Marvel. Disney yeah, but owns Star Wars. Disney owns fucking. It's not quite saying. as cancerous as Marvel. Not quite. It's, it's, it's the same got, thing. Got, Andrew, they're the same thing. Plus, 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 plus. It's got Disney no. It's got Marvel. range. Disney has Bu- Buena Vista. Disney has. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Disney owns Marvel. Disney owns Marvel, and it owns Star Wars. No, 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 that's what. Pixar. What I'm saying is, is that Disney are yeah. the big umbrella. At least they fan yeah. out to other things. Oh, of course, yes. yeah. But I'm just talking about this one pocket of. Also, YouTube. Stranger Things. Can I just say, Stranger Things was rejected something like 15 times before it got picked up by Netflix. As well. I can't pass comment on Stranger Things yeah. or on TV awesome. stuff. To be honest best, with you. But anyway, there's your answer. I'm glad you listen. I'm glad you agree. Well so, done. Anyway, so Andrew, <laughs> your, your villain of the year. What are we doing? Hey, where right. are we? Oh, Andrew, I've villain of the forgot. year. I don't get me started on roller derby. Right, hold on. Andrew, <laughs> fuck off, you twat. Andrew's villain of the year. Villain of the year. Andrew, villain you're of villain, of villain of the year. year. <laughs> you, you prick. Okay, there you go. No, 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 no. No, My no, villain no, 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 you've lost no, it now. No, no, That's it. No, no, you no. said me. So, so we're going to move on. Matt, you you Matt, for stopping villain... the podcast and forcing us to start the smoking <laughs> lamb. How about that? Matt, uh, Matt you're the villain of the year, please. <laughs> Fucking prick! I'm gonna tie. Yeah, no, no. You know what? I, it was Felicity Jones, but actually, no. You are the villain of the year for making me work really fucking hard since May. Oh, well, tough fucking shit, Matt. You're villain of the year. <laughs> wait, wait, oh, by wait, the way, wait, but, but can I just say, Felicity, up, jo- Felicity Jones for Rogue One, fucking punchable face. Can't stand. No, her. she's lovely. Okay, no, right. Bugs Bunny wait. teeth. Okay, yeah, so exactly. everyone, everyone, yeah. take a, take a breath. <sighs> Matt, your villain of the year. Yeah, hang on. I just need to compose myself after all the love on the podcast. <laughs> Bollocks for this. I'm off for a piss. <laughs> right, you go for a piss. Matt, your villain of the year. Uh, my villain's the same as the last couple of years and the same as Drew's. It's death. It yeah. robbed us of some great people. I won't go through the list like I have done before. Otherwise, we'll be here all day. But... Um, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's worth doing a separate podcast for that, and then maybe a Deadpool for this coming year, oh, and see God. who goes. Do um, mm. do Doug Stanhope celebrity death pool was best one out there. Mm. Um, Indeed, Ross, but... your villain of the year. <laughs> I'm sort of coming down from behind. <laughs> I know, um, right? <laughs> my, did we, did my we miss all the this? year? 
my villain of the year, and it's something that's been creeping in for a while. I don't actually remember, I think my villain of the year last year was the audience or something like that. Yeah, I might have done it for a couple of years. I'm sick of audience. I think mine was um, last year was Cineworld, actually. It's, you want to move, say, you wanna move, say, Ross, you wanna move to um, Hampshire. There's no audiences here well, at all. Cine, good. Well, Cineworld, Cine in my opinion, has gone up in my estimation, but that's another story. Um, my villain of the year, but like I say, it's been creeping in for a while, is, and I can't get, like, it's hard <laughs> for me to even unpack this, incomprehensible films. Films that, like, I do not understand the number, and there are more than I can even list. But like big short. films, but just gen- no, no. But I, I got. I'm talking about films which just. I, I'm, I'm almost going to say shot by shot are incomprehensible. So Jason I don't Ball, understand yeah? having right. Yet, yeah, funnily enough, that's one of them. Now, I don't want to go too much into my bottom five films yet, but there are films that I have seen in the last year where I am like, it's not just that I think they're bad. That's one thing, or I don't like them. That's an opinion. So I'm sorry, sorry Ross, Ross. I've just seen who I put down as my hero of the year, and just brilliant. Is it no, Netflix? No, no, no. It genuinely, it genuinely is like half the conversation we had a minute ago, and I just laughed because right, okay. I just looked down. <laughs> and I was like, oh fuck, oh fuck. Marvel, Marvel is here. No, genuinely, my, I will go on. To this. <laughs> we won't talk about it now. I'll let you. Find, but my hero so, of the year is genuinely Disney. <laughs> Amazing. I sort of agree, but um, so anyway. Uh, <laughs> so look, it, there's, no, there's, no, there's no point unpacking it too much. But in my, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll say. I'll, I'll, I'll mention some of my because I had a bottom ten. Obviously, we're only doing five. So three. There, there are films that are just that are just from shot by shot are incomprehensible. Yeah, go. On. And, I, and I do not understand. Like now you see me too. I mean, this is not in my. To- this oh, is now you the see me other thing. Terrible. I, I mean, I stopped it. This is the problem. I stopped it like. 20 minutes in when a certain thing happens which i just couldn't i was just like are you fucking sick? like how do they i don't even understand how the editors sit through it so there's things like but okay actually i'll tell you what i'll take two films with the same star who 20 years ago it would be unthinkable to say that these are bad like like you won't see these films and the, the star is jackie chan oh yeah. and drag Dra- dragon blade and skip trace are completely, completely incomprehensible. Like they do not make sense from from line of dialogue to line of dialogue, and they do not make sense from event to event, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, they are, they're, and they're not just bad. Bad is one thing, or or so bad they're good, or whatever the fuck you want to call it. They literally do not make sense. They they do not make sense. Like like just they don't track <laughs> at all. And I do not understand. And there are way more than this, and some are in my top five, and blah blah blah. I do not understand how it has gotten to this. And I, I, I almost feel naive saying that considering, you know, whatever. No, 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 but, you, but, but, but I just, I'm shocked at yeah, how many films I've seen. The craft of filmmaking in, in those kind of films is shocking. And, and I don't mean, but like I say, and, and just to rattle around it off in like, I'll be like five seconds, but it's like, we used to love, I still love, and I'm sure a bunch of us love, lots and lots of films from, let's just say, the late 80s to the early 90s, let's call them even straight to video, whatever you want to call it, genre movies that are silly, 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 fun, 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 canon films, whatever you want to call them. But they all totally, totally made sense. Even if they were goofy, even if they were, you know, weird and wonderful, yeah. or whatever, you still generally, and I'm sure there are exceptions, well, American generally, Ninja, you, it, it's, yeah, it's right, got low production whatever. values, but it makes sense. It tracks from shot to shot. I mean, I, yeah. They all, they all, like, you know, they may be goofy or whatever the fuck you want to call it, but they, you understand. This is in a must have, Ross, I must have, I must have had a very um, fluky year in that respect. I haven't sat through a film it's that I, I haven't. Those, it's because I haven't and, really and understood. You, like, you were saying last night, you've only watched about 100 films. So well, I've, yeah, I've seen, like yeah. Like Drew, just, like Drew, just, and like me to degree. No, 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 I, no I agree with you. Yeah, I think I have been fluky. I think I have been very selective. In what I mean, you, you get to the point where you genuinely think... Uh, yeah, again, not to go on too long. Like, you genuinely think, how did they do that scene? Because those two people aren't talking to each other. They're saying things. They're not, you know what I mean? Mm. And, and I'm talking about it on that level. I'm not just talking about things that have been cut out of films. That You know what I mean? Like, they cut something out and then that bit doesn't make sense or whatever. This whatever. is a long five like, seconds. Yeah, anyway, look, no, I'm, just saying, I'm just saying, but I just, I'm using those two films as examples. Yeah, that's cool. There are, there are many more. But no, 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 it's a, it's it's a, a, it's a, it's a it's good... What, I want to know what's behind it. I want to know, I'm genuinely curious. Uh, China. Um, 
Well, yeah, there's. I actually there, there North Korea. No, no, there's definitely no, there's definitely something Russia. in the China thing. There's definitely something in the China thing because if you look at Transformers Four alone, yeah, yeah, that, yeah right. I, anyway, I agree with you. Cool. Done, done, yeah, done, done. done. Yeah. So I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna change it up from the running order. I'm gonna go straight to Hero of the Year because we need a bit of positivity. Uh, I'm gonna launch with the Hero of the Year. My Hero of the Year, I've got. Two different ones. The first one is a jokey one. The second one is more serious. Uh, it probably will cause a bit more debate, but I think we've had most of the conversation. The first one, my first heroes of the year, are Paul Tantrum. Hang on, wait, 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 wait. Are you, wait, wait, are you Did you just talk over my joke? Yeah, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Are you doing a boy ass? I'm doing a boy ass, but only for comedy purposes. Um, My first heroes of the year... Uh, Paul Tanter and Simon Phillips, they resisted the urge to release a film this year. I think that was good not on them. Not true. Not not true. Really? A Paul Tanter film. A Paul T- not a Simon Phillips film, but a Paul Tanter film has just called, come out, called, and get this kill ratio. And guess how good it is. Oh, my God. That's on my list at the top. Yeah. yeah Can I just unbearable. interject here, by the way? Um, I don't know if you guys know this, but I've started writing novels, and I've already oh. got two out mm-hmm. already. Is that and the hero I've... of the year? It, how, no, 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 you brought up Simon Fitt, well, the second, <laughs> it's about a journalist that follows someone in their profession, the second one's called The Actor, and if you get halfway through the books, uh, the book, The Actor, Phil, you'll really like that, because he ends up on a film set, yeah. and I'm saying no more. Ooh, I'm, I'm, is there I'm... an exploding door? <laughs> <laughs> there is, there is, exactly correct, yeah. Amazing. Okay. So, yeah. so Excellent. That, that's my jokey hero of the year because they haven't made a film together and I think that's progress. Um, yes, that's fair. For the world. For the world. Um, my actual hero of the year is Disney. The reason is, and Andrew, shut the fuck up for a second. Um, whether you like you... the films or not, and I appreciate that some of you do not, Disney have had a fucking phenomenal year. Finding Ooh. Dory, most successful film of the year, it was actually pretty good. Captain America Civil War. That wasn't bad at all. The Jungle Book was actually a very good remake. Zootopia. Oh, it's fantastic. Hang on, fantastic. Yeah, Zootopia was really good. Mm. Doctor Strange, for me, was one of the best um, Marvel films that they've done so far. Uh, Moana, I haven't seen it yet. Moana. But it's had (gasps) awesome reviews. It's amazing. On top of of that, you've got like the associated Netflix TV shows as well. Disney have, you know, and on top of that, you've got... Well, you know, they're going to acquire... It looks like they're going to acquire Netflix. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I've yeah. heard the rumour. Um, and on top of that, you've got... Um, you've got Star Wars Rogue One, which I'm sure we'll come to oh. later. Disney are just doing a fantastic job of making films that people want to see, that make money. And I don't think Disney have actually had a flop this year, apart Not from far, Alice right. Through the Looking Glass. But even that... I don't think that flopped. It only made 77 million domestic on a budget of about 150. I don't think it... 77 domestic isn't that bad for a budget. No, it is is when you consider that the last Alice film did 400 million domestic. That was terrible. I actually prefer, through just... Quickly, through the looking glass, I prefer a hundred yeah, times. Yeah, I mean, don't get me film. wrong. I, I'm not a massive fan of either. The only, the, probably the only flop that Disney did have this year was actually uh, the BFG Spielberg film. Did it? Flop? Alice, I didn't Alice, know that. Alice through the looking glass's uh, combined gross worldwide is two nine nine, which is which is still a failure because I think the budget's one fifty. So they say what three times the budget to be successful. That changes year by year. Yeah, yeah, it does. But if you think not, about how much think, money they put in, a, I don't think it's considered a failure, though. No. Um, it, it was. If you can, it, just in terms of like, if you look at what the last one did, and you look at this mm. one, but the biggest loss they had this year was the BFG, which is Spielberg, and that had really good reviews. Just no one went to see it. I mean, who gives a shit about that film? I'm yeah, not trying exactly. to sound like who genuinely. <laughs> My except for kids who. Well, no, that's what I'm saying. Except yeah. for kids reading the book at the time. Who gives a shit about the BFG? Yeah, it's a, it's a weirdly, weirdly... No reason. But overall, I think, you know, their films have been brilliantly reviewed. They've done really good business. You know, through, through their brands like Pixar <laughs> and Marvel and Lucasfilm, they've released some really great films this year. So, you know, as a commercial filmmaking entity, that. There you go. Yeah. So that's my hero of the year. Try and keep it a little bit more briefer than that. Uh, Ross, <laughs> as regards to your my, hero my, of the year. My hero of the year? Yes, your hero of the year. My hero of the year is the Picture House Central in London. Mm. It is my favourite cinema to be in pretty much anywhere, but definitely in London. More than Duke of uh, York's? It, 
it doesn't hurt that I'm a founder member, <laughs> but, but I genuinely, I, I absolutely love that place. And to put it into perspective, first of all, it's only a two minute walk from Piccadilly. <laughs> but, but I and my friends are genuinely there a few times a week just to have food and drink, not just to watch films. It's an amazingly well managed and serviced cinema. You know, like they, they do amazing retrospect. I'm, I'm almost like, an, I don't want to sell it too much of an advert. It is the best cinema in London, and there are some very, very good cinemas I, in London. I'm pretty sure you said the same thing last year about the Duke of York. No. <laughs> uh, well, Duke's a, well, Duke's a comedian's picture house. It is picture yeah, house. Yeah, no, it is, yeah. yeah. So yeah. I mean, it, maybe that was, if it was, I, yeah. And, I, and actually, by that it's the... They it's, love films. It, they love films there. Yeah, they they love films there. It's weird that the same brand owns Cineworld, who seem to hate films. Yeah. <laughs> no, but actually, I've got to say, I will say, I think Cineworld has stepped up this year. I've no, been, they've just I've, taken over, well, hang on, hang on. They've just taken over the Empire in Leicester Square. Yeah, but and that it, cinema is amazing. It is, like, but they're, show, amazing. they're showcase cinemas. They're like proper, like Picture House is their showcase brand. What they haven't done is they haven't got round to coming back to Eastbourne, giving them enough staff to come in and stop people on their phones during films. Someone through Rogue One was sat there for the entire film on her phone. Mm. The entire well, that's film. an individual. That, 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 I'm no, just no, saying but, that's, that's but much, also, but also the same cinema. <laughs> someone was there filming the fucking screen at one point on a. I've got to say, with regard to that <laughs> that girl, I completely feel her pain. Yeah, no. you're a dick. So that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I've got to say because that's right, what I was doing through the film as well. Uh, I, I and said, yeah, also, you should do. You shouldn't have done that. No. That's pretty. Don't, uh, there was no one around to see doesn't it. Matter, doesn't There's matter. no one around. How was there no one around? Did you go to the bad only form. screening of Rogue One that no one saw? It is bad. I think form, so. Dude. Yeah. Sorry. Um, no, 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 no. I didn't commit any cinematic crimes. I there were four other people at the screening. They were right at the very back. I was three rows from the front. I could have been mm. on the phone having a massive wank. No one would have known. Mm. Um, nice. So you often Drew's, wank on your phone. Drew's, uh, sometimes, yeah. Drew's I often here- wank on Andrew's phone as well. Okay, so yeah, Drew- last night. Yeah. <laughs> Drew's hero of the year was Kirk Douglas for denying the villain of the year. And that's death. well played. That's well played. A hundred. That's well played. And he is yeah. basically every morning he wakes up and goes, "Fuck you." Well, actually, he doesn't. He probably wakes up and goes, "Fuck you, there." I think but- he wakes up with both his fists up, going, "Fuck you, death." <laughs> I'd love, it. I'd love it if he did. But good old Kirk Douglas. So that's Drew's uh, Hero of the Year. Uh, Andrew, Don't you you're... think it would be very nice of uh, Michael? I like to think Michael Douglas just walked in one, you know, on his birthday and said, well done, you made it this far. Here's Catherine Zeta-Jones for an hour. I don't think they're still together, are they? Or is he just dragged? No, 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 I don't. Yeah, I, just dragged, I just think it would be just, a nice thing for dragged, him. Are they? I thought they'd yeah. split up. No, they thought, split mm. up roughly after he accused her, her vagina of giving him folk cancer. Oh, okay. yeah. that was roughly the time they, they were having trouble. Well, there you go. It just makes my uh, my musings on the gift he might propose to his dad even more meaningful. <laughs> can, I, can I also just say... Like throat cancer. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, get on with it. Let's go. Uh, can I also just say, tough guys. That's yeah. a hell of a film. Okay. So, uh, oh, yeah. Andrew, your hero of the year, please. My hero of the year, I'm pretty sure won't be anyone else's hero of the year, is Tom... Bennett, it's who I, I discovered. You like year. him a lot. That you like him a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I discovered him this year. Oh, Tom Bennett. Up. Well, let me explain. Um, he was um, one of the, um, uh, the, the, uh, the aristocracy in love and friendship. Fantastic performance. I saw that back in April, I think, and I thought, you know what? He's doing a very comic performance in in along the lines of kind of Ricky Gervais, David Brem. Mm. And I thought, wow, that's something very special in this film, amongst other things that were special. He then turned up in David Brent, the movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, He's he's actually... As his best mate. He's quite well known over here for things like Phone Shop. I don't know if anyone's Yeah, I'm sure he is, but I don't see him. And Family Tree. He was great in Family Tree as well. And so he was in Life on the Road. Again, Mm. one of the best things about that film. Yeah. And then he turned up in Christopher Guest's Mascots, which was horrible. But he was the uh... best... He was the best thing about it, though. And um, he's a new discovery for me. So I think, uh, yeah, Tom Bennett, I'd love to see him in more stuff on, on screen. If, dude, oh. if you, he's had a very long TV. Well, I mean, as he's been I, on TV over here for at least right, 10 yeah, years. I will, years. I will check it out. A couple of my mm. friends are in Phone Shop. So, um, phone Shop, <laughs> honestly, Phone Shop is really good. And Family Tree, which was Christopher Guest's show. Um, but he's in the, he was one of the main people in that. He's really good. So no, he's really great. Good. He's a fantastic comic performer. Good. Mm. Good. Matt, you're here of the year. I really struggled to find a hero, actually. Um, So in the end, I just went with uh, something easy and went with Ryan Reynolds for basically spending 10 years trying to get Deadpool onto the screen. 
he's also been in some ridiculous films before, like all, I don't know what he's been doing for a few years before this, but those films he's been in. Green Lantern, <laughs> anyone? No, but, but not oh. even that, but even things like, things like the voices, and he's, he's been in some oh, really bizarre bollocks, really? Yeah. Just awful. He's, um, yeah, he's a, he's a strange one, isn't he? But yeah, I know, Matt, do you know what? That's a good shout, because I think... But you yeah, know what? That's, he's done well that's to good about really Ryan Reynolds. In. To, it's good about Ryan Reynolds to mention that he is in wacky shit like The Voices. Mm. It means he will entertain other films outside of the usual. Ooh, you know, the, ca- I mean, oh, the fans- captive, guys. The captive yeah. was awesome. I yeah. mean, I'm, like I say, it's admirable. I'm not going to... Yeah, it's a bit unfair to so shit. Like, I just feel like those decisions just haven't been... I just, I just like, I used to actually want to watch a Ryan Reynolds film. I think is what I'm saying. And then there was, I would say, a good few years where I'm just like, why would I care? A bit like McConaughey for a while when McConaughey yeah. went all wrong. Before he had the McConaughey, like, McConaughey, yeah, and and mm. very si- similar, you know, out in the wasteland. And and you're right, it is actually quite admirable to do off kilter different stuff for sure. That's true. Cool. Okay, so, um, oh, where should we go next? I tell you what, we're gonna do. We're gonna do our number three films of the year. And I'm going to kick off with Drew. It's a film we've mentioned, <laughs> everyone's mentioned this year uh, so far, and, except Ross. Uh, but mm. uh, Drew's number three of the year was... <gasps> drum roll, Green Room. Hey! Uh, I, I don't think pump, you need to say pump. anything else about that film at this moment. Um, my number three of the year was a film that I saw on Netflix. Uh, in this country, at least, it was a Netflix exclusive. And it was one of those films that literally stole my heart. Uh, I thought it was beautifully made. I thought it was superbly done. And literally no one I know, out, uh, anyone else has seen it. It's a film called The Little Prince. I've heard of it. I haven't seen it. Mm. It is... I remember you posting on Facebook about it, I think. It, yeah, it, I, yeah, I've heard a, a few things about this. Genuinely, yeah. is beautiful. And, and I don't use that, that term lightly. It is a beautiful film. It's so well done. The animation on it is so on point. It is just amazing. And if you have a list of films to watch that you haven't watched this year that you should, The Little Prince should be on it. Uh, Matt, um, Saoirse will love it as well, I think, when she's a little older. It's it's just a great kids' film, but it's a film that connected with me. It's based on a French book. Um, Absolutely loved it. So I'll that, give it a go if I can get her to stop watching Star Wars at the moment. So. <laughs> uh, like, yeah, that's a hardship, isn't it? Um, <laughs> so uh, that's mine. That's Drew's. Ross, what was your number three of the year? So number three for me was a film that it took too long for us to get compared to everywhere else in the world, and it's uh, Rocky Seven Creed. Creed. Oh, it so should just be called. Being in my top it should just be. It should just be called Rocky Seven. Who would have thought that <laughs> Rocky Seven? <laughs> would be so fucking brilliant. I know, right? It's so it, high I, up I your list. I still haven't seen it, it is, yet. It is absolutely... It's phenomenal. Now, it's it so was, good. It I've got to watch very, it. It's probably the film from the... Uh, on my top ten, it's the one that's maintained the most from early in the year, if you like, sort of a better yeah. way of saying it. And in it fact, easy... Ross, I, I seem to remember on last year's Christmas show, I think I'd seen it and you hadn't. We had a bit was of a discussion about when it was coming out. To, I was desperate yeah. to see it. Yeah. And and it paid off. And, and you know, the way the music, like every, Michael B. Jordan, Ryan Coogler, I cannot, and this and Fruitvale Station, I cannot wait for his Black Panther film. Yeah, like, I know, I, I know, right? wait yeah. for his Black Panther film. Because again, what a fascinating director. When you hear him talking, you'd be like, and, you, have you heard him being interviewed? Because you'd be like, and it sounds awfully prejudiced, but you go, he's the director of movies? Yeah. Which is a shit thing to say. Do you know what? I, know, I feel ill I know saying what you it. And he is amazingly talented. Yeah, I, I agree. No, that's a, that's a really, really good shout. Andrew, you're number three. My number three is from a film earlier this year from a comic duo that I didn't really know anything about before I saw it. Um, <clears throat> it's Key and Peele's Keanu. I love that film. Love okay. it. Oh, mm, fucking love awesome. that film. I, I've, seriously, I think I think it's the... I think by far, it's, it's it, the best use of a cat in a film ever. <laughs> Ever. And just just Ever. quickly, Best just quickly, because I, I can't remember because we talked about this yesterday. Have you seen Key and Peele, the show, the TV show? I've seen clips it's on YouTube. Oh, by brilliant. the way, one thing brilliant. we did talk about was Jordan Peele's film you t- oh, called yeah. Get Out. Get and out, I watched yeah. the trailer for that. It's really good, that trailer. I can't and wait it's got, to see that. Yeah, it's got Parking Patawayo as the star from <gasps> Harry, Harry Enfield. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Oh, must but, watch. But, Anyway, back to Keanu. Keanu yeah. is just so good. satire. It's all over the place. It's got one of the probably the best cameo from Anna Faris actually this time <laughs> yeah. in the oh, film. Okay. Um, 
and it's it's just it's bonkers and funny and everything I love about films. Uh, and it's a Matrix ripoff in places. It's it's bizarre, but that cat is just adorable. As and well. also, there are some bizarrely good action scenes. Like the action scenes oh, yeah, are almost action weirdly scene. good, like weirdly yeah. good for just what is a comedy. It's, it's such an action. unusual. It's such an unusual. You really don't get a film like this very often. I can't think of anything that it's like. Um, it's a little bit like, I don't know, Naked Gun. It's a little bit like Ride Along, I suppose, you know, like the buddy cop thing. Yeah. It's also a little bit Secret Life of Pets. It's also a little bit George Michael t- uh, music video. Oh, that's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah. That George Michael stuff is amazing. Uh, we won't say anything else, but yeah, I mean, yeah, don't it's just, too much, it's brilliant. You will laugh, Phil. You should watch it over Christmas okay. if you can. It's I, think I'm gonna, I, think, I think that's going to be a cult <laughs> film. I think I'm going to be watching that a couple of times a year yeah. from now on. Matt, you're yeah. number three. Um, Little known film. I don't know whether any of you guys would have seen it, but it goes by the name of Green Room. No, I've not heard. What is let, it? let me guess, Ross. Punt. What is, what is it? Yeah, it's punt. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, punt. You know what we should have done? We should have. We should have had a quick Facebook chat saying Green Room. Yeah. Can we all just have it at number three or something like that? <laughs> That's way too low. Way too low. Uh, okay. So, yep, yeah, Green Room. Uh, it's that little low budget <laughs> film that no one's heard of. Uh, excellent. So, um, let's go to. Uh, let's go. Let's let's burst out of our top ones and let's go to our surprise of the year. I'm going to go with Drew's. To start, Drew's surprise of the year was Bloodfather. Ah, oh, so fucking he said good. He really enjoyed it, yeah. and it's been a long time since you can say that about a Mel Gibson movie. Too. And it's so short. I, dare I say, it's like 80 minutes. Actually, I disagree, yeah, I'll check that out this I disagree with Drew on oh, that. Oh, very good. How I spent my summer vacation. Spent my summer vacation was excellent. brilliant. I think it's all right. I, think I, I never quite felt it as much. Like, I liked it a lot. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was really good. I, I enjoyed it sort of thing uh, for Gringo thing, you know get the Gringo yeah. or whatever it is um, so yeah so I think that's a good shout my surprise of the year uh, originally was going to be Relentless Death but I think we've, we've talked a lot about that <laughs> it, just, but it has been Relentless I want to make a film called Relentless I know right <laughs> uh, <laughs> in fact I think I think Paul Tanter and Simon Phillips already have started production on it uh, they, started, wow. they started production today they're going to finish it tomorrow and they're never going to pay their crew Anyway, moving on. Um, so, but my actual surprise of the year is going to be low-budget <coughs> horror films. Mm. Oh, just low-budget films in general this year. Well, just in, I think uh, low-budget is a bit of a misnomer, but independence. So, yeah, okay, you know, independence I mean, is a good way. Without but, being too... But, you know, low-budget as in, you know, you look at anything under five, ten million, there have been some fucking corking films, but independent films as well. But sp- specifically in the horror genre, it's so nice over the last few years... <laughs> With, with, like, The Shallows as well, a film that yeah. hasn't been mentioned oh, yet. Um, yeah. You know, again, and just outside my top ten, but The Shallows, Purge Election Year, which I think yeah, was great. I mean, yeah. Green Room, yeah. et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This year has been a real choice year for um, <clears throat> kind of lower-end budgeted horror films. And mm. it's so good to <clears> see <throat> again. After years of, of, of kind of, you know, paranormal activity type don't, movies don't. it's nice to see that finally we've 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 kind of we've, we're out of that and we're, we're we're coming back to the next thing now and we're going back to like that 80s aesthetic of horror films mm. um but albeit with a much better edge so that's my surprise of the year it's been awesome with that so matt your surprise of the year my surprise is a film that my wife and her friends went to see in the cinema and she came back absolutely gushing about it, saying it was the funniest film ever. So when I finally sat down to watch it, I had absolutely no hope for it, but was really pleasantly surprised. I think I know what And it was say. Bad Moms. Yeah, man. Oh, I love that. No, no, I love that. That's so much. I love that that's, film. Uh, that's my surprise so of the much. year as well. Is yeah, it? Yeah, I'm, it was yeah, very, I was gonna, very good. Yeah, um, I'm surprised at just how much can I, I just liked say, it. Can I just yeah. say also, and it is, I absolutely loved it. It's it's that that what's the word? Not correlate inverse relationship between how shit the title is. Yeah, yeah. that is yeah. a shit title, and how good and, that film and is. And actually, how shit yeah. the marketing was for it as well. Because yeah, the marketing I agree. made it look like a fuck. And again, don't jump at me for this, but it made it look like a Christian wig. Fucking bridesmaids comedy. Chill, yes. chill. And That's I was I just like, I literally hate. That director and those films. Yes. And yeah, I don't get I it. thought yeah. it's going to be that. And I watched it and I'm like, not only did I laugh all the way through, 
Mm. But I could have watched it again straight away afterwards. Yes, yeah, I absolutely indeed. agree with you. Completely agree. Uh, the, the three main cast were fantastic. You, know, Mila Kunis, Catherine Hahn just had me in. Oh, she's yeah. a, isn't she amazing? All the way oh through. God, she was great. And even the kid, the kid from. Um, fuck, what did she do before? What was the film she did before? Una Lawrence from uh, Southpaw. Yes, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, yeah. Uh, and also, Una Lawrence appeared in a film that didn't appear in my <clears> top 10, <throat> but called Lamb. I've heard of that, but this is really good. You must check that out if you like her. <laughs> oh, you mentioned it yesterday. Good. Did you mention I, it yeah. yesterday? Yeah, I'm yeah, genuinely, I'm genuinely surprised that five relatively cynical cunts can sit yes. on a podcast and state that, that one of the best films, one of the best comedy films of the year, was a film starring Mila Kunis called Bad Mums. Well, funny well, enough, yeah. well, Mila Kunis Phil, is Phil, fine. Hold on, well, hold on. Well, hold on. Well, Mila Kunis is all right generally, but I mean. On, on Smoking Lamb, there's six of us. And, oh, and and that was the one only film this year that all six of us agreed was great. No so other wow. film. I feel no, bad oh, that it's did, not did, in my top did, ten. Did Green Room not come up, Andrew? <laughs> no, 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 Green Room didn't come up. Um, uh, well, it hasn't yet. We've yet to record our end of the year show. But the uh, but Green Room hasn't unanimously come up. Bad Mums has... Yeah. Uh, all six yeah. of us have agreed. So, so, like, the, so the, the, the only us, downside, Phil, us, just to butt in, is that the, it's now spawning the sequel, Bad Dads. So I don't know I, how that's going to play. I, if it's the same team, if it's the same team, yeah, know? it could be okay. It could. Mm, be okay. Yeah, I'm a bit worried. Well, okay, let me be. Let, well, actually, let me be honest. Like, given the surprise of Bad Mums. I'm more open to definitely going to see that if yeah. you see yeah. what I mean. Like, like I mean, I think yeah. I'm more likely to want so, to see it than. You know. okay, that was so, that was half my surprise, though. I've got another what's half. Your, what's your other half, Andrew? Well, my other half is actually pretty blatantly obvious, um, and they're, they're, the two halves are kind of the same thing. No, my surprise was Ghostbusters being pretty good. I yeah, love I'll it. Get fucked. No, I yeah, enjoyed no, it. I, am, I, am I wasn't, ex- I wasn't expecting that. that film. I enjoyed it. I liked it. it I didn't expect nothing. to. That's the point. And Ghostbusters, the original you know movie series. I, I, actually, my I actually did something in Ghostbusters that I haven't done in 20 years of going to the cinema. The last how, many fingers, how many fingers did you use? About three. Uh, uh, but I actually fell asleep. No, what? I genuinely it was awful. fell asleep. No. I, I, I can't see think, it being awful. Do you awful. know what? I don't it's think it was awful. awful. I, don't, I, I just think it was everything that I thought it was going to be. It was... Really, and and I, right. This has nothing, genuinely nothing to do with being all women Ghostbusters. Could not mm. give a fuck. For me, and I know this is a me thing. I don't like Paul Feig. I don't like Christian Wig. I don't like Melissa McCarthy. So you put those three things in a film together, and regardless of what it is, if it was been Bad Mums, I'm guessing I probably wouldn't have liked that film. Because I just cannot. They just do. The one exception was Kate McKinnon, who I thought was she's fucking brilliant. Great. Yeah. Oh, she's great. She was genuinely. She's really great. I genuinely fell in love with her in that film, and she was the yeah. only thing for me that stopped that. And and actually, um, Chris Hemsworth was really funny as well. Hemsworth was ace. He was ace. But I didn't laugh point, once during it. It was just I well, funny enough. Well, funny enough, Matt. Neither did I. But I just enjoyed it. You know, I just sat through it. I, I smiled a couple of times, but I never laughed. Um, I just I think I was smiling more at the fact that it wasn't sucking. You know, what I mean, right. I, it was. I, I, I mean, agree. there were some genuinely good bits in it, and I really yeah, quite liked it. I agree, it didn't suck. Yeah. I just thought it was. It was. Well, it sounds like you didn't see very much of it. I only missed the last. I missed ten minutes in the last like twenty-five minutes. I think. Um, yeah. Basically, when all the CGI stuff started to happen, ironically, I fell asleep. But um, actually, that is probably. Like the least interesting bit of it. That yeah, is true. Is. Yeah. When it, when it like to be, into... I don't mean that in a negative way. It just it's just not the bit that yeah. matters. That it's much. not the best bit. No. When, yeah, when exactly. it turned into a Marvel film, I thought I'd get mm. Andrew's bit. Well, in, no Andrew. wonder you fell asleep. Exactly. <laughs> so Ross, your surprise of the year. So it's sort of already been taken, <laughs> but <laughs> as as like an alternative Marvel uh, surprise. <laughs> no, 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 no. Like the whole sort of I don't know. Um, well, it was it was originally Young Death. Was the was the um sort of like? Can we in, have a rule? Can we have a rule for next year on? No, no, but it's done, no it's one done. can mention death. No, that's fine. That's I agree. Oh, we're it's stuck. Bit, it's too easy. It's too. Yeah, but will. it's too easy. It's too easy. It is easy. But, right. but 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 okay. So on the bad moms front, like as in a film that ended up really getting me for what of a better way of saying it. There was um, 
I think I might have mentioned it as well. It's called the Mind's Eye, which is <laughs> yeah, you um, it's it essentially me. it's it's the scanner sequel that we never got, and I still think those silly sequels were fun. But the Mind's Eye, there's something interesting about the Mind's Eye. It's directed by a guy called Joe Bagos or Bigos. There's a there's a type, The first thing that happens when you see the film, and I don't know about anybody else, but the thing that I don't like about films a lot these days is seeing twenty five production company titles oh, like at the beginning of the film, and then mad. and then seeing them immediately in the film. Uh, so and so production in terms of so and so. Yeah, what so the fuck is that about? I, I get it. I get it. They show because you've got to do it. You got to. Put, I mean, let's no, face it. We, it. We're doing it, but yeah, it's we, absurd. We watched... I watched a British film the other day. Oh, fuck, I cannot remember yeah. the life of me what it was. There genuinely was producers. something like eight <clears throat> production logos yeah. at the front and then yeah. eight black screen credits of right. the same that's thing. Yeah, so, yeah oh, you're right. right. Yeah, that yeah. Is, no, that's Crazy. not... I think, I think actually... Like national lottery funded films are, are probably some of the the most. Um, yeah, it's just hard to raise money. Sexual abuses of this, and they check, yeah. you can tell the editors trying to be really clever and going, yeah. whoosh, 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 you know, yeah. and with all the, these different things coming up. And, and the better yeah. ones, the better ones, put them into like the film. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, yeah. So yeah. You don't yeah. On that though, it drives you nuts. Uh, the the other thing that annoys me is the production mm. credit logos. They do these amazingly pointless logos. For mm. a production company that will never make another film. Yeah, exactly. And you're like, and it takes up 10 <laughs> seconds of screen time, yeah. and it's some train coming down a track. And no, then the no, train dolphin, splits in half. Dolphin. And a dragon, a come, and a dragon <laughs> a comes dragon. out the middle. Yeah. And out of the dragon's mouth comes a dolphin. And then the, the dolphin yeah. pisses, and it comes down into the logo of the company. And you're like, it's funny because <laughs> Dragon Dolphin Piss Train production. I'd love to see that. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I'd go to the cinema just to see that fucking six dragon, seconds. Dragon Dolphin Piss Train production. Yeah, Dragon Dolphin Present. Piss Train production. And, and, and as, <laughs> hold on, I haven't finished yet. As the piss forms the company name, it then leaks down. And the leaking bit off of it turns into productions, and right, then yeah. then a helicopter float flies to the middle. It explodes and shatters to the next logo. And that's the, like that's, that's, that's where the, actually that's the Dolby logo these days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> with, all the sa- so, with all the sounds. Uh, uh, yeah, so, so, great, so amazing. I, yeah. So sorry, the actual but the actual surprise because that isn't the surprise. <laughs> <laughs> the surprise. So the mind's eye. The very first thing you see is this. It's a caption. And it just says, this film should be played loud. Oh, right? that's beautiful. And, 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 and then the film is fucking awesome. You're talking uh, in line with your whole indie films, you know, yeah. low budget genre movie. Because this really is indie low budget. <laughs> it is fan fantastic like i mean you need to like that kind of scanner z type movie don't get me wrong there's a lot of people screaming at each other with blood pouring out of their eyes kind of stuff uh nobody you've ever heard of doesn't matter but it is it is extremely enjoyable like extremely does it all properly for what a better way of saying it and um i'm just using that as my so um, in in view that we are slightly running over time as usual uh, i'm (coughs) going to uh to to put an end to surprise of the year but what a great selection of surprises that has been okay so everyone is rested pee breaks have taken place and uh, and and can i just say like i say dragon dolphin piss train productions llp has been incorporated Marvellous. In fact, that's now the official name of this podcast. Uh, <laughs> please, please yeah. call it. Please, yeah, oh, call you it have. that. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so we've we've gone through our top uh, down to down to number two. So we're going to quickly do our number two film of the year, um, and then we're going to do uh, a few other bits. We're going to do the quiz, awards, number one film, and next year. So. Uh, number two film of the year for Drew was a film that we have discussed uh, quite a lot today. Uh, no, in fact, it's a film we haven't discussed quite a lot today. I'm talking about my ass. Uh, no one's mentioned Spotlight yet, really, have they? Oh no, that was in my top ten for a few for a few months. Yeah, it was. Maybe. It was when it was when I'd only seen eleven films. It was in my top ten. <laughs> yeah, but I, it was fine. I, I didn't I didn't dislike it. Uh, it well, was what was number film. eleven at that point? <laughs> I know, 11? I know, right? Yeah, yeah. It, 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 sharp ju- drop off the cliff. So. My number two film of the year was a film I only saw Friday. Mm. And Andrew... Oh, what could it be? I don't want your opinion on this one, if I'm honest. <laughs> well, we already know your opinion, because you fucking looked at your phone all the way through it, you savage. Mm. 
But my uh, second film of the year, uh, my number two is uh, Star Wars Rogue One. Oh fuck off! It's Didn't interesting. Like it's it. interesting. No, but it's interesting because I like, I felt like I really really loved it, and it could be in my top ten. And I just felt I don't know. It's, it's interesting because I really love it, <laughs> and and but I just I couldn't. What it, for whatever reason, I just couldn't put it into my top. It's, a, it's actually in another top ten list of mine. Mm. Uh, if that is even anywhere near That's your bottom ten list of films, that yeah. is one of the most absurd th- things I've yeah. seen this year. Anyway, uh, Matt, what did you think of it, by the way? I thought it was pretty meh. Um, yes. I didn't think that much of it. Um, I don't now, know whether keep it was spoilers, too far removed keep, from... Keep spoilers for real I'll minimal keep, on this. Cause, I so don't do any. Don't do any spoilers. Yeah, I, I don't know if it was too far removed. Um, I wanted the opening crawl. Oh, I wanted... Oh. I wanted the Star Wars logo. I didn't want fucking title cards telling me what every planet was. Yeah, um, planet how would you know? How would you know where you what was going on? <laughs> yeah, well, they don't. They don't in the um, normal Star Wars. Yeah, but they Wars don't. Yeah, the title as cards as don't do much help oh, to it. I, mean, I don't have. Yeah. Any uh, do that. you know what? Though, yeah, like, you're, I didn't you're like right. That. They don't. But what they do do in the other films, it's really clunky. Is every time they said planet, do do. Do, do. Oh, what, they, what they do when they go in the other Star Wars films is I really come because they always Going name across. the planets. Yeah, but it doesn't need to be exactly like a George Lucas film, does it? It's no, George this, this is, you may want, may want shit CGI. This is, why, <laughs> this is why I really enjoyed it because it's mm. not that. It's no. not. Oh. It, is it, Phil, is it really second best film of the year? I think yeah. it's top. I, I would agree that it would be top 10. And I'll tell, tell you why, Andrew, because. If it hadn't been for circumstances, yesterday I would have watched it again the next day. I've never done that with a film. Is there a film called Circumstances? Yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 was, it was my number 11 film of the year. <laughs> oh. I, I want I'm surprised to you haven't heard it. Anyway, look, hold on. It's not no. about why you guys don't like it. It's about why I do. So, no, no, no. No. Okay, just, just before everyone goes on, I would like to see the original version that hasn't been highly edited and thrown away that they show in the trailer because there's so there's much only, in the trailers only but that eight, happens in a lot of, that does happen in a lot of films man, yeah there's but only it's about like, five okay. or six bits in the trailer i've okay. i've looked at, i've i spent a, i spent an hour reading an article yesterday there's only yeah, five what about or six the bits. tie fighter on the bridge i've got to say end. i could easily watch i could easily i mean obviously having seen the film i can say this i could easily <laughs> watch a version that was longer I mean, ideally, I don't want anything to be too long, but I could watch a film with more of it in, if you see what okay. I mean. Happily. So, like, so happily. my... Well, it's funny you mention that. Hold on, hold on. I could happily watch a version that was shorter. Let me just give my reasons why I liked it, then we can move on. It was it was a genuinely interesting story. It was beautifully tied into the other Star Wars films. And there were some bits in it that completely took me by surprise. And I'm not going to mention any of it here. Mm. But certain effects shots that, whilst not perfect, were yes. fucking bloody good. Very yeah. clever stuff. There was a couple of moments, uh, specifically in the end battle, where you, there are a, a, a few shots that are in there that, that I literally just j- almost jumped out of my seat for. It was Also, can I just say, I cared. And I it. cared. I oh, absolutely I cared. cared. I cared. And, about, yeah, and, and, with on that. I don't and understand the that ending... The ending, the whole way it ended, mm. and I'm not going to give anything away, the whole mm. way it ended was really unsurprising. And for a Disney Star Wars mainstream film, was about the least mainstream ending you could ever pretty much have. It was really unsurprising. Yeah, I thought you, it was Yeah, you said, un, you, said un, you said unsurprising. Yeah. Oh, sorry, no, so oh, unsurprising. I, 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 I have to say, with that. In, in terms of Rogue One, there, there are two very good bits in it. Uh, Donnie Yen earlier on, and uh, and the, sec- the second to last yeah. uh, sequence I thought was very good. So how can yeah. Donnie Yen, when he's only got a wooden staff, take on a load of stormtroopers who are armoured right up and kill them? Say, because, I have to say, on, Matt, 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 hold on, Ross, 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 Matt. Matt, the, that was the least Star Wars <laughs> bit about the film, which is why I, I liked it, I think. <laughs> yeah, I the least is his Star Wars. Because he's Wars-y. amazing. That, that he's literally amazing. sounds like someone that's never watched a Star Wars. It's the least Star Wars bit of the film. I, li- I quite the like The film Force Awakens. The, least Star Wars I, I actually the Force liked. Awakens was good. I I no, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. What yes, it was. The, Force the first Awakens, hour was all right. The first hour was all right. And then that was it. The Force Awakens loses something every time you watch it. 
Yeah, and the I second hour does not Rogue work as good. One will gain something when you much better. It. Yeah, it I want to gain a lot, lot for me. Yeah. I, I but anyway, I, I anyway, my number two film him. of the year yeah. was Rogue One. Ross, your number two film of the year. My number two film of the year was The Nice Guys. Fine, which um, punt. All <laughs> oh, right, there you go. Yeah, <laughs> I absolutely loved it. I've seen it four times now, which is fucking rare. Um, for any film, uh, and it's about to get rarer when we get to one number one. But um, I just love it. First of all, can I punt. just talk about no, Russell Crowe? Okay. Oh, punt. what does that mean? We're punting it. Well, okay, but I'm just going to talk about a few quick things. Can I just quickly state that um, Russell... The punt uh, is there for a reason. Hang on, perhaps. hang about. Russell Crowe is rapidly becoming John Goodman, which is fascinating. Yes, yes. that's bizarre, yes. isn't it? Um, like, he looks exactly... I'm not going to talk too much. I, I just love it. Okay. I, I absolutely love it. Punt. Uh, so much good stuff. Hey, will you stop calling me a punt? <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Matt, no, no, Matt, just, just ignoring the rule. <laughs> I know, it's amazing. Matt, no, your no, number like, two, Matt, your yeah, number two okay. film of the year. My number two, again, a little known film that I don't think anyone's seen called The Nice Guys. Punt. It's fucking me. <laughs> <laughs> Andrew, your number two Matt, film actually, of the year. Matt, you and I have been the same on two, on two I, numbers. Andrew, I know, I know. That's bizarre. Andrew, your number two film of the year. Well, can I just say there won't be any punting going on with this title. I didn't like the nice guys. War on everyone was far better. Um, just the other way around for me. <laughs> but no, I like totally, both. totally I like the other both. way around. Uh, number two for me is uh, Anomalisa from earlier this year. Yeah, so, I, I remember well, when we were doing the podcast, you raved about that quite a bit. It's really good. Did Tom I talk Noonan. about that last time? Oh, okay. Tom, Tom um, Noonan as well. Tom yeah, Noonan. Tom Noonan is great. Uh, yeah. Everyone's great. Charlie Kaufman is great. The animation is great. It's a it's a you know ninety minute movie, and probably one of the best American dramas about humanity for a long time. Oh, uh, that's great. Sound good. So, mm. um, so we've done our, our ten to two. So let's quickly take a step onto the films that didn't impress us this year and give our bottom three. Three, Ross, not five. I said three. We said we said five. Well, Drew's only given me three, so we're going to do. But three. we're just we're just going to say. But I've not, got five. Really, yeah, we've all got five. Okay, five. for those of us that have prepared three, we will what? list three. For those of us that have prepared five, I will allow you to list five. So I'm going to list okay. Drew. Three. If we've uh, Phil, Phil, if we've got ten, can no. we just? I've got list... ten. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, no. Wait, wait, wait. No, 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 Phil. No, because obviously I've prepared a list for Smoking Land. We're doing it slightly differently. If I just read them out and don't talk about them, like ten, I'm nine, eight, to seven. Do that. I'm happy to do no. that too, because there's just, not a lot but to not speak about. about them at all. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm happy to do can that. Can we limit yeah, it to just the list no, them? Can we limit it to this yeah. time? Give them the airtime. Yeah, I agree. I, I will be agree really with quick with my bottom ten. I agree. I tell you what. Give me a second then, because I'm going to need to go and get my full list. Uh, off of lot. Okay, while I'm doing that, I'm going to do Drew. So Drew has done three stroke four. So his number three worst film of the year was Yoga Hosers. Um, oh God, I got five minutes and stopped. Which I actually Pump. didn't. Which I actually didn't <laughs> oh, think was that yeah, bad. Uh, number two I didn't was even put that in my top ten. No, hey, list, list, people, list. Yeah. Number two was a combination of Gods of Egypt and Independence Day uh, Regurgence. I love that Independence Day. <laughs> oh, I loved it. You loved I loved it. Indi- I loved Independence Day Resurgence. But you it's, love it's Regurgence. Not, but, but hang on, hang on, hang on. It's not good, but I enjoyed every second. Okay, actually, I'm gonna. Th- there is a point where I'm gonna talk about Gods of Egypt roughly in the same way. Um, okay. And his number one worst film of the year, and I have to say this was my number one for quite a while, uh, but eventually it did get uh, 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 did get replaced. Was Cabin Fever remake? What I couldn't a get into pile it. Of oh, it was bullshit. awful. I mean, the, the original's bad enough. The fucking mm. remake is shocking. Um, mm. So my 10 then, as we're doing it, number 10, Divergent, Allegiant, Surprise, Pile of Shite. Number nine was 31. I Rob, Zom- get Rob Zombie it. has horrible. fallen a long way since Halloween. Mm. Number eight, Cabin Fever. Number seven, The Girl on the Train. Fuck me, that film was dull. It was massively, it. Over, massively overrated. It was like, terrible. Massively, it was terrible. Yeah, massively overrated. It was, yeah. it was the second... Can I just quickly say, no. just quickly... No, 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 just because, like, the reason why... There's a lot of reasons why I hated it, but the main reason was it was dressed up as, again, one of these films, and again, we were talking about this <laughs> yesterday, Andrew, films that are dressed up as being clever, and with the actual twist, it said it's not as interesting as you yeah. think it's going to be. And do you know what? So and, that, and that could well be... It's so that trend... shit. If that trend continues, that could well be my villain of next year. Yeah, right. Do you know what? No, no, I I'm guess I I'm guess the twist two minutes in. Yeah, it's absurd. And it's absurd not only did I shit. guess the twist two minutes in, I guessed a better twist five minutes later, and yeah. right. they didn't do it. So my number six, yeah. and I don't know why I do this. I like watching YA films because I'm convinced one of them will be good someday. 
Um, my number six worst film of the year was The Fifth Wave. Um, I like that. Chloe, the Chloe uh, Moretz, it was all the Chloe right. Chloe, Chloe Moretz is yeah. great. Yeah. The film was boring. Mm. Number five, mm. Jason Bourne. Mm-hmm. How? Uh, it's not that bad. It is. It, is. it really is. Number well, four. You can't, say, you can't say the same when I mention something that you number don't four, like. Number four, Kickboxer Vengeance. Oh, don't. I didn't even put it on my top. I couldn't even put <laughs> it What's anywhere. that? What's Kickboxer that? Kickboxer Kick Vengeance. Vengeance. Oh, I didn't see it. We had a chat. Uh, myself and Mike Parkin talked about this yesterday. <laughs> Fucking unbearable. It is unbearable. genuinely shocking. Uh, my number three worst film of the year is London Has Fallen. Uh, yeah. Olympus Has Fallen was <laughs> awesome. I love that film so much. London Has Fallen uh, was not good in the slightest. Um, Can I just three. make a one little point? Go. Um, <laughs> it is terrible, but Brian Larkin, who's the best thing in it, is in my film and I love him to pieces and he's fucking amazing. Yeah. And he is the best thing fair, in, in London's film. Fair enough, it's still a shit film. Yeah. Uh, yeah, number two, I'm movie. likely to take some <laughs> shit for this, but... I will preface this by saying the actor, the main actor in this film, has never, in my opinion, made a bad film. And he's made some pretty interesting films. Uh, Central Intelligence, my number two worst film of the I year. Loved I, 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 I loved that film. I loved that. I liked I really that a enjoyed lot. It. I really enjoyed it. I literally didn't laugh once. I didn't. I don't laugh. understand I that at all. I really liked it. I'm not uh, actually Phil, Phil, Phil. It, despite me liking it, I'm not sure I laughed. But again, it was just one of those things where I just sat in my seat and, <laughs> and smiled. I, I just really liked and it. And also, Kevin I love Hart seeing for me. The Rock as a the Rock as, Well, here's the thing. I don't normally like Kevin Hart, but the Rock. I love the Rock as a dog, yeah, and yeah. I thought that played, yeah. really, well. The, the thought rock, played really well. The Rock was great in it, but for some yeah. reason, the film just didn't work. My worst film of the year. We discussed it before we came on air today. Mm. Um, I'm not going to go into great detail. It was a bad idea, but then again, so was remaking Dawn of the Dead. And mm. that worked out really well. So I gave it a chance, but fuck <coughs> me. Point <coughs> break, do one. Mm. Worst film yeah. of this year, and actually one of the worst action films I've ever seen. It's, mm. It was so, it took everything that was great about Point Sorry, Break. Sorry, I missed, I missed the name of it. What was Point it? Break. Point, oh, yeah. I okay. took everything mm. that was great in Point Break, which <coughs> is one of my top five films of all time. It's one of the best action films ever, ever made, regardless ever. of... Yeah. That and regardless Aliens of, are the yeah. two best action films ever made. Whoa, Die Hard, what the oh, fuck? Oh, and Die Hard, yeah. Get with the, <laughs> Sorry. Get with the fucking programme, dude. But, yeah. but, Point Break <laughs> and Aliens are above Die Hard in my top five films of all time. Or well, top films of all time. It just, they just are. It's just how it breaks. There's no diss on Die Hard. I fucking adore that film. But everything that was good about Point Break was missing. And if you it's can say, unbearable. if you can genuinely say that a film is better, it, it, the film is worse without Keanu Reeves in it, that's yeah. a statement. Because <laughs> genuinely, we'll to, without we'll Keanu Reeves, us. that film yeah. is worse. Yeah. Who we'll be talking about this again in a bit, trust okay. me. <laughs> Point right. yeah. so, Maybe um, more than once. Andrew, mm. your, your bottom ten of the year, please. My, all right, like I say, ten through six, I'm not going to mention, I'm just going to name. Number ten, Lights Out. Mm. Number nine, Rogue One. No, oh, um, what is oh. that? It's fucking That's shit. Not, it's not worse than a year. It's Rogue, not Rogue than One year. is insufferable shite. Number eight, Point Break for reasons filming. Yeah. Number seven, Suicide Squad, and number six, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I walked out of that film. Um, number five, uh, I can talk about this now. Number five, Swiss Army Man, abysmal. What? Absolute, I, get, I don't hate, get that. At all. I liked that. I don't hate it's it, the first hate time. It. It's the first time I've like pulled Dano in anything. Yeah, fun, like well, funny, funny enough, there are two films, this being the first, mm-hmm. in my bottom five, uh, where, again, on the other show, The Smoking Lamb, all six of us agree that they were shit. And this is one of them. Swiss Army Man, I just hated it. Number four, X-Men Apocalypse, got about an hour in and walked out just after the rhythmic <sighs> fucking sweet dreams are made of these. Can, can I just, on that, can I just say, hate it. Yeah. you should never walk out of a film. It's getting um, harder and harder, Phil. Well, it's getting harder and harder. Funny enough, it's I've, walked harder out of, and harder. I've walked out of three films that physically this year, and I've wanted to walk out of maybe ten. Um, My yeah, no, I agree. I agree. On the whole, you shouldn't walk out. I would have walked out of Rogue One, but I promised Joss I'd but stay. I think and and I, ended up, that, that, I ended up Facebook messaging. But I think there's an equivalent un- here. I, I, believable. But I, 
I think there's an equivalent which we'll get to in my brain is turning films off 20 minutes in now, which I would never normally. I, I get shit for it's it from the same I'm getting sick of doing it. I genuinely give a film. I'm getting sick of doing it. Century. Oh, no, no, no. X Men, X Men, Fantastic Beasts. I actually stood up and walked out of the cinema. There's a reason for this because I've got an unlimited Odeon card, mm. <laughs> and we yeah, we had a enough. we had a dis- yeah we had a, a discussion about this. Um, Josh was saying, well, if, if you'd have paid to see it, you wouldn't have walked out, and I said. Ah, nearly, not quite. If I'd have paid to see it, I wouldn't have gone in the first place. Well, yeah. I, I walked mm. out of Warcraft. Here's the interesting one. I walked out of Warcraft twice. So did I. I walked out twice. So Have basically, I, well, here, well <laughs> the first time, <laughs> I went for a piss. Yeah. And I genuinely debated whether I should go back in again, but I did go yeah. back in again because my mate was in there. And then the second time I walked out... <laughs> that was really time I walked, when I, <laughs> the second time. The second time I walked out to have a chat with the girl behind the candy counter. Did you pull up? I was, I was trying. The Stratford Westfield. What film were you talking about? Sorry, uh, Warcraft. Oh, it's yeah, abysmal. Yeah. Anyway, anyway, anyway I've got a story on, about hold Warcraft. Hold on, hold on, Andrew, carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sorry. Uh, number four, X Men Apocalypse. Number three, everybody wants some. Oh God, no, it's my terrible. God, I know that film. What, what is it? It's terrible. It's uh, the guy that did Richard Linklater's film. It's oh, that's why I've decided not to watch it. Yeah, carry on. It's too. They should have called I, that I, film. They should have yeah. called that film Bunch of Cunts. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But there is I'd not gone to see it if it was called it's that. Not, remember, not remember, remember keep it moving, keep it moving, keep it well, moving. Hold on, I haven't said anything yet. <laughs> so, uh, Ro- yeah, Ross can explain, I'll just list. Right, Sorry, number three. Every, if it, it, it's just two, two hours of a blank screen would have been better. I was really annoyed. Number two, Warcraft. Uh, I walked out of Warcraft an hour in. Here's an interesting thing about Warcraft. It was like a 5 p.m. showing. I walked out an hour before, uh, an hour into the film. It's a two-hour film. I went, um, I got home, and half an hour later, I live on the seventh floor of a block of flats. Half an hour later, a fire broke out in the opposite building. They closed the road, loads of fire engines and all that close off the road for the weekend if i hadn't have walked out of warcraft i wouldn't have been able to drive back and park on my road and get into my flat i thought so you were talking i thought you were saying as... sorry gone it was just as well i did walk out of it and it was shit okay. if this had been any other film <laughs> i wouldn't be able to go back home i would have thought i would have thought i thought you were going to say that orcs started the fire yeah <laughs> well, so... they might they may as well no i walked out halfway someone's son dies or i can't remember what it is yeah. and i just thought no i've had enough it, it was it was a bad film Move on. yeah and number one um the worst film of the year by by quite some way blair witch yeah i haven't seen it yet. i haven't seen it yet didn't see um, it. <laughs> I, it's it's again I, I said swiss army man we all all six of us agree on on the smoking lamb warcraft we basically agree but <coughs> blair witch, we all definitely agree blair witch was it is just absolute shit what's it's happened just, to wingard what's happened yeah to i know wingard? Mm. I, it's horrible it's it, it, and not only that you know a lot of people go oh well you know a sequel or a reboot won't affect the original that's the argument that ghostbusters remake had versus the original this one does unpick the blair witch project and spoil it well, uh spoil the legacy of it hopefully um, when we get together next i would have actually seen it so matt your your bottom 10 Okay, at number 10, X-Men Apocalypse. Yeah. At number 9, Kickbox of Vengeance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> number, uh, number 8, the Point Break remake. Too low, man, uh, too low. N- yeah. N- yeah, sorry. Number 7, Independence Day Regurgence. Yeah. Eight. Number 6, Captain America Civil War. Oh, Whoa, I really? highly disagree really? with that. Hang on, I, I just, even I disagree with that. Hang on, worse than I years. just got... Bored of it. I d- now it, that it I don't just, disagree with, it is at times you just want to just. Keep but where's some Point Break? Sorry, sorry. News flash. News flash. This is going to shock everyone. I liked Civil War. You guys didn't. Yeah, I like. No, I like Civil War. It was oh, right. Oh, I did. Uh, I was never bored. It's two I've and a half hours long. Probably got to give it another watch. I was never but... bored. Two and a half hours long. I but thought worse, it was probably yeah. the best superhero film of the year. The, the airport fight just dragged on. No, oh, yeah, I just got I bored. Go that. that was I the best bit of the film. I oh, think how hot is Aunt those... May now, by the way? Mm. <laughs> well, you know the joke about, but you know about the joke about that. The whole thing no. about when when he when RDJ says, you know, you're surprisingly hot looking Aunt. You know they used to go out yeah. for real. Yeah. RDJ and Marissa Tomei. <laughs> anyway, That's hilarious. anyway, because we have a quiz to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, right, number five. Andrew won't like this, but the Neon Demon because it was mm. utter gas. No, do you know what? I, I I I didn't hate it that much, but it was shite. I can't it was awful. 
Awful, awful. Uh, yeah, number four, Suicide Squad. Yeah. Uh, number two, Batman versus Superman. What? Oh, sorry. Everyone's, yeah, saying, uh, hang everyone's on. saying the extended edition one. Is, uh, is great. It's not. Oh, sorry. sorry. The extended edition yeah, no, no, is not I'm, better. You know what? Because I saw the original, I was like, meh. And then I think Drew said, watch the extended. It's really good. And Josh and a few other people. No, it's and not. Then I watched, like no, original, I'm not going to watch the original. The extended nah. I'm going to watch it on Christmas. I'm going to watch it over Christmas. The yeah. extended. Go Sorry, on, yeah. Batman vs. Superman was three. Mm-hmm. At number two, Yoga Hoses, Kevin mm-hmm. Smith, What Happened? Again. Five um, minutes in. Five, literally five minutes in. I just, I just didn't. I was before. done. I was done. I didn't, I didn't. The brat it was, it was just I, awful. I, I, and you know after, after, and how many after of the Depp family can you get in the uh, film? Do you know, do you know what? All of them. I actually liked it. What? No. I actually genuinely, I actually gave it a six I out of ten. I thought it was. Whoa. I thought. I thought. No, it was it awful. Was funny. Uh, and I, it I'm wasn't funny. So much better than no. anyway, Ralph oh, Garmin oh, in it was awful as well. Come on, come on. Slicing like off in lemon juice is better than Tusk. After Tusk, yeah. I vowed never to do Kevin Smith again. Not after such a great leap with Red State and then back down yeah. to Tusk. Oh, Red State yeah, horrible. I can't, that cannot happen to me again with any other filmmaker. Sorry, that's it. Go it's on, over. Man. And number one, Ghostbusters remake. I don't really know. Worst of the year, though. Really? Yeah. Like, worse yeah. than Point Break? I, why? Yeah, why? Let Max say why. Yeah. I just, I, I sat there bored and I was just looking for things to do and having a rummage. I thought I had testicular <laughs> cancer at one point. And that was funny. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> they yeah. should well put that on the back sir. of the DVD box. Well played, sir. Well played. <laughs> So boring, I go. ended up having Did it rummage. turn out just to be a knot in your boxes? That, that'd be amazing. Can you, yeah. imagine, can you imagine on the DVD case? So bored, I ended up having a rummage and thought I had testicular <laughs> cancer. Matt a Dunham. rummage. And it was funnier. Yeah. Okay, so, uh, Ross, and remember, you have a quiz to do, so if you want it's time, fine, it's fine. keep it No, no, brief. it's fine. I'll, I will just hair through them. There'll probably be a line on this. <clears> go. So, number 10, Jason Bourne, because it's unbearable, but I couldn't make it the best event, like the number one of anything. Yeah. <laughs> it was just yeah, unbearable. And also, if I if I hear this piece one of line. music one more time... No, no. If I hear this piece of music one more time... Like, through the whole movie, the I can't... Was, literally didn't stop playing for the whole film. It didn't stop playing. And Alicia Vikander, who I adore in every way, and she made that thankless character in Man From Uncle amazing. This she, this is her film where I just went, you no, done, forget Legend. it. Like, go... Yeah. Yeah, I'm bare. One and line, like, Ross. One line. Yeah, done, 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 done. Morgan, number eight. No, no, listen, no sorry. Listen, sorry, listen, whoa, whoa. listen, ten to three is a list of film yeah, I've names. Got you. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. I've got you. So ten. <laughs> fuck off. Ten. Jason Board. Nine. Skip Trace. Jesus Christ. Number eight. Morgan. Fuck that film. Yeah. It wasn't number right. seven. Number seven. Grimsby. I don't know what it is. Sasha Baron Cohen has got on Mark Strong. But I'm unbe- unbearable. I didn't like hate it. I didn't hate it. Uh, it did make me laugh more yeah, than Ghost. I didn't, I didn't laugh it. at all. Number six, Suicide Squad, for obvious reasons. Uh, so where am I going up to? Three, three. Right, okay. Five, Hardcore Henry, because fuck that. Thing. I agree. I agree. Unbearable. Yeah, I remember number Josh three. hated that earlier. It was headache un- inducing. Bearable. Uh, number four, Criminal, the Kevin Costner thing. What an abortion of a <laughs> film that was. That was pretty terrible, but it's a guilty pleasure. <laughs> I don't know. I, I didn't. I just. Ugh. No. Okay. So again, not a lot to say on these films. Number three, Gods of Egypt, because I just. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> I just. Oh fuck. Well, hasn't Number Alex th- Proyas apologised for that film? I, I'm sure no, no, he no. has. I, Alex Proyas said it was the critics' faults again. Oh god, it's just unbearable. It's the critics' fault he made that film. And enough about it, but unbearable. Yeah. Um, We're going to come now. To that in a now, number two and number one. It, this is I'm five films. No, 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 no. Number two and number one. I both stopped watching less than half. Well, Point Break was thirty. So number one is Point Break because thirty-five minutes. So let's not even bother. It's just totally <laughs> devoid of entertainment. Buddy. Good idea. That's not totally. Bother. Yeah, totally devoid. And 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 again, who keeps casting Edgar Ramirez? I don't understand oh, it. Right. But number two. It's possibly slightly more interesting. I stopped it 20 something minutes in. It's Now You See Me 2. Now, have any of you seen Now You See yeah, Me 2? Yeah, I've watched the whole uh, thing. Yes. Right, yeah, no. now I'm just, I'm only going to say one thing about it. I got, well, it's one. Spoil the shit okay, out so, of it. So, no, 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 right. Okay, right. Okay. So, I don't remember where they are at the beginning of the film, but they're somewhere in America. There's a moment that happens where they're all being chased. Yeah, they all get chased in that show that they're doing. Yeah. And they 
go through a door and they are in China. No, 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 they don't go through a door. They go down right. a... Um, An alleyway or something. No, no, no. A, they, a shoot. They go down a me. rubble shoot. And I they don't come out the bottom. Ross, to I be fair, that. your main criticism of that film, they now, actually me... do address in that film. Right, well, I don't... Yeah. Fuck, fuck them. So, because that bit... Hang on, hang on. That bit... But it's, it's kind and, of... And, and, and they it's get kind of like restaurant. saying it's kind well, of like on, saying the bit in Usual Suspects where Kevin Spacey. Uh, <laughs> no, Kevin, it's not. It's, no, 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 it's, it's, it's kind of like saying, "Yeah, fuck them." They didn't explain that. Well, they, no, they no, do. no, 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 they no, do. They do. And it's a whole plot. But hang on, hang on a minute. Hang on, hang on a bit. The Usual Suspects though is like a proper film. No, don't get me wrong. So, right? don't get me wrong. so no, hang on, hang on. I haven't even got to. I haven't even got to the bit. I haven't even got to the bit. This is madness. This conversation is quiz, quiz, quiz. Yes. Well, let me. Then. It's better be good. You, I haven't seen the this. You, the so, bit yeah. when you get, hang on, hang on. The bit where you get to Woody, ha- Woody Harrelson two, as I call him, oh, who is this? Oh, this God, effeminate, yeah. permed, this effeminate, permed oh, no, Woody right. Harrelson, who and and here's the thing. There was a moment where I might have kept watching. If I'd have suspected for a second that every character in the film had a twin that was kind of gay and weird and permed, I might have kept watching it. I might have kept watching it. <laughs> 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 and, and the bit that blew my mind about how bad that was was when Woody Harrelson one turns to the normally amazing Lizzie Kaplan, who is one of the best yep. actors around, and turns to her and says, "Remember, I told you I owed this guy a lot of money. It's him." And 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 they didn't say that beforehand. Okay. That wasn't said in the film no, you're beforehand. Right. So okay. and, and I and just to finish it. I ejected for Blu-ray. I rolled the Blu-ray up because you can't snap a Blu-ray, and I threw it away. That I can't. Fair, fair I enough. Um, I would no. argue if we had more time that I don't think you could rate any film as I know. the worst of if you haven't. No, seen I agree. It. No, I agree. No, no. Same with so Point Break. I, I totally confess and and put my, like Andrew walking out or whatever. But you shouldn't stop a film with a <laughs> review. It, but fuck my eyes. But, no, no, no. But yeah. with Point Break. Genuinely, you would have been better off. Okay, so good. Those are our worst films of the year. I don't think there's any massive surprises on there other than Rogue One. Andrew, you're an idiot, really, genuinely. I love your opinion. It's an overall prick, really. I love your opinion, (laughs) and I I love doing these podcasts with you, but that is one of the most idiotic things I've ever heard. But that's that's the reason why you like it. Rogue One is toss. (laughs) Anyway, so uh, as I do, as I do, as I do every year, I do my alternate awards. So I'm going to go to my alternate awards. Feel free to to have a small opinion, but I'm trying to keep it moving on. So, the most entertainingly entertainingly bad film of the year award. Say the word properly. Yeah, 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 right. The most entertainingly bad film of the year award goes to Gods of Egypt. I fucking hated it, but it made me smile constantly all the way throughout because I was like, "This can't get any more stupid." Were you cussing yourself when you were? No. So, 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 the second award which also goes to Gods of Egypt, is the best film to watch on a train as it makes it a hundred times less shit award. You're still doing that. I am. <laughs> uh, goes to Gods of Egypt. Because genuinely, on an iPad, watching Gods of Egypt on a shitty train journey on yeah, Southern so. was actually yeah. one of the highlights. Oh, you of managed to actually travel on Southern. Yeah, I know, well, right? So, yeah. surprise of the year, I've covered this one off. Low budget films rule the roost. Performance of the year, Mark Commode, uh, for oddly favourable reviews for his friend's movies, uh, CJ. Which he, put, which, which he insists... Isn't the reason why he gives <laughs> See, Jason Bourne, see Girl lies. on the Train. Yep, lies. And, 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 and Warcraft. And Warcraft. And Warcraft. And Warcraft. Genuinely, oh, three of the worst films of the Absurd. year. Absurd, yeah. And he gave all three of them glowing reviews. Not even with hesitation, glowing reviews. But he I also consistently, deny, he consistently he denies that it's because he knows these people. I love Kermo, and it, but that sucks. Mm. So the mm-hmm. Just Fuck Off and Die Award uh, goes to Michael Bay and the Transformers 5 trailer. One second, though. 13 hours. How was good brilliant. Is 13 hours, 13 hours was yeah. genuinely great. And that's why yeah. I give him the Fuck Off and Die Award. Because when he's not doing Transformers, he can still churn out a good film. Yeah. Transformers 5 trailer is incomprehensible. Well, funny so, enough, hey. the, uh, the the Fast and Furious 8 trailer and the Transformers trailer, we mentioned this last week on the other show, um, they, they both feature the principal good guy turning bad. Yeah. We think they mm. we think they may be the same script. Do you think they're part, no part of the shared universe? Really universe? Do you think There's no way he's turned bad. Oh, Fast and Furious and Transformers should have teamed up ages ago. <laughs> so, well, anyway. no, 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 hold on, no, no, no. <laughs> Fast and Furious 8 and uh, Transformers 5, they they do turn bad, but there's no way they are bad. They no, will no of course. <laughs> Secret. Yeah. Secret. So, moving on, the least deserving commercial flop of the year award goes to the nice guys. 
Yeah, I've no idea why no one wants to see deserved. that. I have no idea no, why no one wants to see that. So uh, the come in, your, come in Your Time Is Up award goes to Johnny Depp's career. Oh, fuck yeah. No, no. Yes, oh, that was last year. It was, years. yeah. He gets that two it's years been money. Years. Um, the trailer of the year award goes to Suicide Squad for delivering the Fair best enough. film trailer of the year. Fair enough. Mm, yeah, hands I down. Yeah, mm, yeah, and, and it one just of the made worst the full films. From, it made the fall from grace even higher. Yeah, no, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. It not only did it deliver the one best trailer of the year, it delivered the two best trailers of the year. Yeah, there were two of them. Yeah, Ball you're and right. Ball and Blitz and Bohemian Rhapsody, phenomenal mm. trailers. So yeah. um, it's not the fact it has women in it. It's the fact it's actually a really average film award goes to Ghostbusters. It's sort of fair. I mean, I enjoyed yeah, it. It, has better than, it is better than average. I know what it, you mean. It, it, it's, it's an average film. I didn't hate it. I didn't like it. I'm, but the fact it has women I'm, in it. I'm just grateful it wasn't the insufferable, fine. original, breaking piece of shit. It Do you know the other thing you know? about Ghostbusters that really fucked me off? And I'm not going to dwell on this, but it's a small point. Right. It's the fact that it had all of the cast of Ghostbusters in it. Yeah. Even, no, it even had it even had um, uh, Matey Boy who died. They're, who's they're all they're all in it. They're all in it, right? Harold so, Ramis. Well, so yeah, so Harold Ramis. So but he's in it yeah. in a in a What's... bust. But it's like so if you're gonna have the entire cast cast of Ghostbusters in it, make Ghostbusters three. But but also, I my main problem with it wasn't that they were in it. It was that they were just playing other random characters. Yeah, that yeah, was they, could, scene, they could have yeah. been. They could have been themselves. Yeah, they could have yeah. easily. Literally, no, been but, uh, but Ernie Hudson was though, wasn't he? Well, no, they didn't. No, because that doesn't make any. You have to have them either all. Like, like we were talking about me. this. We were talking about it's like Dan Aykroyd for cab driver could have just been yeah. Ray. Like he could have just mm. been Ray. Like yeah. but the main but the one main issue was Murray's character because but they literally named him. But they named him and said yeah. Just fake them. Anyway, so um the really it takes. This much effort to fuck up this much award goes to... Sorry, it's the... this. Sorry, I'll start again. The, really? Happening? Really? It takes some effort to fuck this up award goes to Time Warner and DC. Best characters, I, worst Again, film. it's not DC. I don't think it's DC. But it's DC are part of the company. They're part of Time Warner. Yeah, I just... Say. Mm. Uh, the Cameo of the Year award goes to Jesus and Ben-Hur. I haven't seen it. That's fuck. I'm not even fucking joking. Literally, about three How's quarters. That even work? Of, three quarters away during the film, someone Jesus turns, turns up. Someone, yeah, no, 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 I'm not joking. Jesus literally turns up. Wait, wait. Do you mean Jesus or do you mean the Jesus? The as Jesus. In, um, Big Big Lebowski. No, no, no. So I'm talking, yeah. talking Jesus. As in, Jesus. Oh, okay. And and and, Jesus. and not only not only that, but when the film finishes, when the whole Ben Hur story finishes, you spend ten minutes on Jesus. It's fucking oh, insane. What? Sounds I know, horrible. Right? Okay, the Oscars only really like famous dead people award for missing out on the, these other stars who died this oh. year award. George Gaines, Vanity, Gunnar Hansen, Rowdy Roddy Piper, they all deserve to be in the in memorial bit and many others. Mm. The proof that mm. award show suck award goes to uh, the Oscars <clears> once again <throat> this year for forgetting Stallone, Creed, The Martian and Star Wars yeah. The Force Awakens not even getting a technical award. Straight um, out of Compton. Straight out of Compton as well. The proof that award shows don't suck award goes to Ex Machina for getting the best visual effect. I was so happy about it. It's not that. just because I, I went so to university happy. with the guy who won it. But it's fucking great. The, film the is effects fucking are great. fantastic. Uh, yeah. All reboot and remake suck award and here's the proof goes to Point Break, Ghostbusters and Ben-Hur. Mm. The, okay, so not all remakes and reboot suck award goes to Westworld and the Jungle Book. Westworld was a phenomenal. Jungle Book is absolutely spelled by Andy. Um, yep, yeah, we made it for the Money Award, aka the sequel Suck Award goes to Independence Day Regurgence, uh, Jason great. Bourne, <laughs> Now You See Me Too, Alice Through the Looking Glass, and fucking others. And finally, the films that should have been on my list in 2014, uh, sorry, 2015. What? <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Two years? Know, the films are two years? <laughs> but the, sorry, <laughs> sorry, the films that should have been on my list in 2015, but I hadn't seen, uh, should, <laughs> award goes to The Lady in the Van, which was fantastic. <sighs> Straight out of Compton, which was fucking great. It's the business that and film. the survivalist, the which was awesome. It's good. Survivalist, it? survivalist. It's good. Yeah. Survivalist. The survivalist. Oh, it's really I good. It was really, really good. So those are my alternate awards of the year. So we are now going to. Oh God, I don't even want to know how this is going to go. We're going to go over to Ross for the quiz. <laughs> it's really, honestly, this isn't going to take long. It's just a What's surprise. Up people fuck about um <laughs> it's also going to be quicker because there's now only three of you rather than five people or whatever yeah true 
Right. However, it's going to take eight hours. I'm going to explain. I'm going to explain the rules. <laughs> God. Hopefully, they, hopefully they will make sense. <laughs> Are we ready? We're going to do a warm up. Ready? <clears throat> There's a warm up round for film trivia. Okay. Now this round is called which film is kosher? Okay. <laughs> and, and all that means is all that means is all that means is which film is Kevin Bacon not in? Oh, nice. <laughs> good. Good. Good okay. job. Right. Okay. Right, so Phil, we'll, we'll, we'll go. We'll just wait, Phil first. Are we going okay. bacon, non-bacon then? Yeah. So, kosher, so you just need to you just need to tell me which one he is not in. So, can we use the okay. term kosher and not kosher? Oh yeah, if you like it, or bacon or baconless. I or think kosher bacon. Not oh wait, wait, bacon and bacon. Love it. Get too, too confusing. <laughs> okay, so Phil, Animal House, or National Lampoon's Animal House, I should say. Uh, Apocalypse Now, Black Mass, Planes, Trains, and Automobiles, and Wild Things. Have I got to pick the film he's not in? Pick the film he's not in. Oh, uh, okay, Black National... Mass. Say again. Black Mass. Final answer? F- final answer. Uh, you are wrong. It was Apocalypse Now. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. So let's crack on. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, Matt? Yeah. Okay, so <clears throat> which film is Kevin Bacon not in? Uh, Death Wish 2, Friday the 13th, Picture Perfect... R.I.P.D. and she's having a baby. Death Wish 2. Congratulations. Ah, no. Nice. Well <clears throat> Sorry, I've, I've just realised I've got to do something quickly. Why, why did I not do this before? I've, I've got to put who's actually fucking scoring. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> right, okay, what's, cool. the, what, what's the uh, prize for the quiz? Uh, uh, one, one up the bum. Okay, uh, thanks. From, from Kevin Bacon. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> That's worth it. <laughs> Could be worse ways to go. At least Sorry, I get okay. free uh, mega bits. Well, every actually, months. Phil, Phil, you figure out a prize and also figure out like uh, what the other losers have got to do. That'd be kind okay. of fun. So, okay, so Matt got one. Okay, so Andrew, on to you. On to you. Which film is Kevin Bacon not in? Diner, Flatliners, Rumblefish, Sleepers, and X Men First Class. Oh, that's easy. Uh, the uh, mine. He's well, hang on, it's, it's Andrew. <laughs> I know, but <laughs> that's easy. Let's read him again. Okay, Diner, Flatliners, Rumblefish, Sleepers, and X Men First Class. X Men. No, no, no. Diner, Rumblefish. It? Rumblefish. Oh, is it Rumblefish? Yeah. 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 So it wasn't I, I didn't know. I was so sure about the other three, though. Oh, can I get a bonus point for that? Uh, oh, shit, I should have asked if you did. Oh, fuck, no, 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 no. Shit, oh. there, are, there will be chance to steal points. There will be chance to steal right. points. I have got two extra rounds and everything, but let's just do each round first. Yeah, let's keep it quick. Yeah, exactly. On the okay, so nice. the next one, slightly more complicated, but it will make sense. This this game is called Purple Rain Man, and what that what that means is you have to guess. You have to guess. Take take it in. You have to guess a combined film title. So Purple Rain, Rain Man, right? And the, what what I'm going to give you is the cut, the the, the, the two main characters, <coughs> like for the okay, top three of each cast. Yeah, you're yeah. going to get. You're, so for example, I, I would have given you Tom Cruise and Prince, right? And you you have to guess the film, right? Mm. So I'm going to give you three of each. So therefore, if you can guess it on the first one, you get more points. And then when you get to the lead lead actors, you'll be like, oh, fuck, it's that. Do you see what, do you see where I'm going with that? Okay. Yep. Do you see where I'm going with Let's try it. Let's try it. Okay. So, um, uh, let's go. I just want to play order. Bacon or Faker all day. Yes. Yeah, really good. <laughs> yeah. I've got two more rounds of this. Um, Andrew, <laughs> let's go with Andrew first. Uh, okay. Uh, uh, right. Okay. Okay. So, so you have to guess, like I say, a combined film title. Right. Okay. I think so, I understand. But go yeah. On. So, so like I say, if I were to say Prince and Tom Cruise, it's, you see where I'm, okay, let's let's just yeah, see. Okay. okay, so your third so third tier, you've got Rada Mitchell and Yafet Koto. It's not it's not always gonna be you'll see as you get towards Can it. I so guess at a time? You can guess yeah, yeah, the earlier you oh, guess. Um, you can guess every time. It's just gonna be yes or no. But Rada yeah, you, Mitchell you, and who? Rada Mitchell and yeah. Yafet Koto. Koto. Oh, um for Alien Booth? <laughs> it's a good try, but no, it's good. No, okay. <laughs> that's good. Okay. Um next round. Okay, next you know, next cast. Uh, Dakota Fanning and Maria Conchita Alonso. Uh, oh, um, uh, well, it, um, let me I know the first. Well, the, run, get... the, uh, the running oh. war of the world. <laughs> oh no! Okay, last 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 round, La- last bit. Right. Denzel, Denzel Washington and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, 
Are they are these three all from the same film? It's, yeah, yeah, that's the whole the whole, no no remember yeah. it's two films. Uh, yeah, that yeah. you've enjoyed the title merged together. together. Yeah. Oh, I've got I'm one of them. Pass, pass to Matt. Hang on, hang on, hang on. We've first, oh. Andrew Scott to guess. I've got it. Yeah, yeah, read them again. <laughs> right, so, okay, so you've got Rado Mitchell in the Affect Cote. Yeah. Dakota Fanning and Maria, Maria Conchita Alonso. And obviously, these are all in the same yeah. order. I haven't mixed yeah. them about. Yeah. Then Denzel Washington <laughs> and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, uh, Running Man on Fire. Congratulations. Yes. Ah, yeah. well done. <laughs> yeah. It's a good game, right? <laughs> it is very good, yeah. Yeah, one sec. You just, when you read out the two names, you've got to remember left and right. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and they are in That's the right the order. Like, I'm, I'm not mixing yeah. them about. They are yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So, uh, Matt? Matt, yep. go. Okay, right. Okay, so Dylan Minette and Dan Hedaya. Who the fuck is Dylan Minette? I wouldn't know either, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I have a guess you... anyway. <laughs> but it will, get, it will get easier. But you can make a guess. You, I mean, you might know, because actually, when you get How to the How many films has Dan Hedaya been in? Dan Hedaya? Full Metal Hedaya, Usual sorry. Suspects. <laughs> Full Metal Usual No. Do you, want, do you want the second set of names? I think I need to, because okay. I don't know who one of them it is. Will get more, it will get much more obvious. Jane Levy and Ray Dawn Chong. Okay. So one's blatantly going to be an 80s oh, action one's film. One's well, 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 I one's know one's eight. Commando. Yeah. But you have to... Okay, so, but you don't know the, film, the, the, the combined title yet. Uh, who is it? Jane... So, so Dylan Minette and Dan Hedaya, Jane Levy and Ray Dawn Chong. Right, okay. And then the last set is Stephen Lang and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, I think I know this. So hang on, let, let Matt go first. Um... Stephen Lang. Oh, hold on. It's a suburban I, commando. Yeah. No, it's a good go. Uh, is, does anyone else think they might? Yeah, I think. Avatar. Hang on, hang on. Hang on. Huh? Wait, wait, stop, 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 stop. So, who's saying. I said so Avatar commando. No, no. <laughs> what did you say? Avatar, Avatar. commando. Avatar. Oh, That's no. not a bad guess. No, not a bad I, guess. I, I, think, I think it's. Is it Don't Commando or Commando Breathe? It's Command Don't Breathe. <laughs> oh, sure, right. oh, yeah, I'm gonna give. I'm gonna give. I am gonna give Andrew half a point though. Because no, because it, the, the only thing Stephen Lang was obviously the blind guy. In Don't breathe. Yeah, and I exactly. didn't recognise the other two names, and they were no, basically unknown. So yeah, yeah. Okay. Minette, carry on. Guy. Next. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. So uh, that was a uh, bastard. Come on, <laughs> Don't breathe. Don't <laughs> breathe. <laughs> okay. So, awful. Yeah. So we're on to Phil. Yes. Have yeah, I got go that right? Cool. Yeah. Okay. So okay, here we go. Adam Baldwin and Pamela Reed. Okay, not this, okay, right. No, so ne next one, Liam Neeson and Penelope Ann Miller. I know the I know one of them. No, go on. Okay, and then Patrick Swayze and Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, got it. I'm Hang gonna on. fucking Phil? kick myself for this, aren't I? I can't think of any film that Patrick Swayze and Adam Baldwin have been in together. Oh. It will surprise. Well, if you don't know, it will surprise. Oh, John, I've got it. I've got it. Who's got it, Matt? I've got it, Matt. Matt's, Matt's on the least I points. I think I've got, got it yeah. too. But, well, Matt, I, but Matt's on the least points, so I want to give it. To, I okay, want to give yeah, it back first. Go. Okay, okay oh. Matt. Next of Kindergarten Cop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Amazing, Matt. That was amazing. That well done. Really good. Oh, thank you. That was really good. Okay. Um, Another round now... of bacon or faken, I think. We can do that, but hang on, have we done all three of you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we have yeah. done three of you. You want to do another round of bacon? Bacon or bacon? bacon? Yeah, yeah all right. The only, yeah. the only thing is I've only got two, so it'd have to be like, who can get, I've only got... Okay, well, let's, do a buzz, let's do a buzzer round. Okay, fine. Okay, okay so whoever says then, use your name as your buzzer. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Use your name as your buzzer. Okay. So, here we go. The Big Picture, Footloose, King of New York, The River Wild, and Super. Matt. Oh, Matt, yep. Yeah. King of New York. Congratulations. Yes, indeed. Oh. That was really good. Go on, one more. Do the last one. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just, I'm just trying to sort of like keep track of the scores. <laughs> one sec. Okay, so you want to do another fake, bacon one? I, I do want to do the last yeah. bacon or bacon. That's, a, that's my favourite round ever. You want to, do you want to do that after the next round though? Go on, do, do the it. next round then. Yeah. We'll do fake and yeah. bacon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to make sure I'm miss, not missing any. So we've done, we've done all three of you on that one. Okay, so. <laughs> Right. Okay. This is okay. This is called Jason and Deb's IMDb game, and I can't tell you the thing. So basically, um, it's really simple. You know, on IMDb, it's got the four films, your four things, your an actor is best known for. 
Yeah. Right. Okay. So basically, how am I going to do it? How are we going to do this? It's, it's, actually, it's quite straightforward. We'll just do it person by person. Um, I'm going to give you the first film. Yeah. You have to guess who it is. It, or you don't have to guess who it is, but obviously you'll get more points if you guess it early on. If you get it right, you then have to guess the other three things, <laughs> the other three titles, if you oh, see what I mean. Okay. If, you get it, if you get it wrong... Then we'll, we'll we'll pass it on to the next person. I hope that makes we will figure it out if you want. Okay, so so the, okay, let's go. Phil first. Now, bearing in mind, just because it stars somebody, it may not be the main actor. If you see what I mean, so you might be inclined to say the lead actor, and there's nothing wrong with saying that, but it might actually be a supporting actor. It's just that that's what they're best okay. known for. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Like, but it could be the lead, obviously. Okay, so first title. Is Groundhog Day. Well, it would be a bit obvious to say Bill Murray because it's so he, probably going to be one of the support cap support guys. So not gonna, always. No, not always. I'm just saying that's possible. I'm just making that clear. It's possible. Um, let's go for Bill Murray. Congratulations! Yes, it is. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, because I'm just saying because it might not have been right. It could have been Stephen Topolowsky. Okay. You know. So I'm thinking the next okay. three then are going to be. So you have to you have to guess. Yeah, you have to guess Scrooged. the three. Yeah, this will be. Keep going. Ghostbusters. Keep going. And um, Lost in Translation. Wow, you've actually scored three. That's very wow, good. Wow, that's not bad, um, is it? Yeah, it's really Do good. Do they have to um, be in order? There's no order. It's just what does IMDb? <laughs> no, what does IMDb say? If you I mean, so yeah, I'm... no, but the, the four things they're most known for, do you have to get them in one, two, three, four? No, 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 four. no, no, it doesn't matter which <laughs> order they're in, it's just, it's okay. just before, yeah, that'd be, yeah. that'd be, that'd be impossible, because yeah. it's, it's, it's not, it's not dependent but, on you. But if you accidentally get it right, you should, like, double your points. <laughs> I, I could, I don't mind doing If you accidentally one, get it right, you're probably cheating and looking one, two, at the IMDb. Actually, sorry, yeah, no, you've got, sorry, you know, you've got, oh, no, no, you did get four, because you've got to count the actor, but one you didn't get was Moonrise Kingdom, just to let you know. Yeah, okay. Okay, so moving on to Andrew. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sometimes it's going to be TV, not film, and and this one is Star Trek: The Next Generation. Uh, Patrick Stewart. Yes, congratulations. That's good. So, okay. do you want to guess the other three that he's done? Okay. That appear on his own. The, 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 the three that appear on his best known for. Yeah. Oh. That's tough. It is. I think Green Room might be one of them. Keep going. Um, oh, uh, probably. Oh, let me think. Let me think. What's the lot? Uh, uh, the most famous of his movie versions. First Contact. Uh, full title, please. Star Trek: First Contact. Yes, congratulations. Really? Yeah. Fuck. Yep. <laughs> um, and something else he was in. Oh dear! Hold on. I shouldn't have said that, by the way, because I tell you at the end when you. <laughs> when you first <laughs> oh, I don't know. Star Trek Insurrection. I don't know. Uh, uh, I'm going to take a guess three? and say X Men. Uh, hang on, hang on. Yeah. No, I'm not, not, not going to give other points away. But okay, no, no. But I'm just going to take yeah. a guess and but, say. Okay, yeah, fair I enough. I'll yeah, say X Men. Got about X-Men. So, uh, can I uh, X Men Days of Future Past? Uh, okay, so no. <laughs> it okay. was um, Next Gen, X Men Two, X Men, and First Contact. Oh, oh, okay. just, just to be clear, and again, it's very, it's very hard to predict what, yeah, yeah. what they are sometimes. So it's, mm. it's kind of cool. Oh, green room um, isn't there? No, no, okay. exactly. And it's very hard to figure out what the metric is that IMDb actually bloody uses. Um, okay, uh, on to Matt. Actually, I think it's the most visited pages for the film. Yeah, yeah, it will be. Yeah. It prob- mm. There probably yeah. is some, some sort. Of, but also, actors can now uh, put what they're most famous for. That what they want to be seen for. Oh, okay. You can actually adjust that on Pro. You can adjust oh, it now. So, so it's like all the bets are off. So, um, Matt, yes. um, Big Fish. Oh, that's a tough um, one. That could be one of three. I'd say Ewan McGregor. No. No. Tim Burton. It's either that or whoa, Tim whoa, whoa, whoa. Burton. Just to put you out of your play, it is all actors. I've done all actors. <laughs> oh, okay. So hang on. So hang on. So Matt, you said uh, you were Gregor. Yeah. Phil, you, you guess an actor. Oh, God, I'm trying to... Um, uh, Albert Finney. Yes. What? what? Nice. Yes. 
Right, so so here's no, the no, question. Is the actor meant to be first listed in the film? It doesn't have to be. Like I said, no. it could be anyway. It could be. That's what I'm oh, saying. It could, it could be, be a support, random. Okay. Could be a supporting actor. Well, it's not so much random. It's just. Yeah. But um. Okay, but in so the Phil, last two rounds, it has been the main actor. So Phil has stolen. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be. <laughs> <laughs> the other, the others, the others. Anyway, so but also the films that are on, they may not be the lead. Just yeah, because no. you've got one as a lead, they may not be the lead in the other stuff. Okay, so, Albert so hang on, so, so Phil, you, you can now, Phil, you can now potentially steal another three points. You've already stolen one point. Okay, so I don't, I, I can only think of two films he's been in. Literally, my brain has gone that that numb. But okay. um, Skyfall, keep going, and one of the Jason Bourne films, but I can't remember which one. Well, make a guess. Uh, Bourne. Ultimatum. Okay, and keep what you've got to get one more. And in Born to Fantasy, then I'll do two Born. <laughs> you you have actually gotten um, Skyfall of the Born Ultimatum. Wow! Great. And it was also Aaron Brockovich. Oh, okay. Really? Yeah, I never what, got over Miller's million... Crossing. Yeah, I never got I mean. that it's in a million really, years. It's really really hard. To... So Phil's got six points in that round. That's pretty awesome. The comeback. Um... <laughs> Fake yes, it or bacon. Up. We've done all three of you, haven't we? We've done all three. Yeah. yeah. Okay, now this one is a pretty straightforward round. We're nearly there. Um, um, it's really simple. Which actor played these characters? Okay. okay. Pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll go... I'll try to which order we... Oh, I suppose we go back to Phil now. Um, okay, Phil, who played these characters? If Phil doesn't know, can we jump in? Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And, and again... How would you like us to jump in? Um, Names. Well, I suppose he well because Phil can guess at every stage. <laughs> Phil can guess okay. after each name. Right. So Phil, you could make a guess after I say the first name. Yeah. Okay. And actually, that means the guys you can then jump in if he doesn't if he doesn't want to make a guess or so. Yeah. And if, oh, if you get it wrong, Phil, we can still keep going until someone gets it right. Okay. You yeah, can yeah. See what I'm okay. So your first character name is Church. Church. Do you want to make a guess? Oh, I I think I know this. Yeah, I've got it as well. Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> That's a good guess, but it's wrong. Uh, let's go to that, Andrew. Uh, is it Bruce Willis in The Expendables? It is. Oh, Bruce isn't Willis. it? Yeah, shit. <laughs> okay, that's really good. One, good. Hang on, what is that? One, two, three, four. That's four points. Fucking hell. Oh, wow. <laughs> Sorry, how did I get four points? <laughs> because you, you've got because, there's, because there's five, and there's five people, five characters for each one. So you oh, get okay. more points. Right, 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 right. The earlier you guess it, yeah. the earlier you guess it. Yeah. Okay, um, let's, go, uh, let's go to Matt. Yeah. Okay, your first character <laughs> name is is Deke De Silva. <laughs> <laughs> That's proper hard. Do you want to guess? I have n- no clue. Do you, do you want to guess, though? No, you don't. You don't lose. You don't lose for guessing. You don't lose for guessing. I just lose to the next. What, person. Each think... person is going to get a chance. So I can only think of one person with that name. Oh, okay, so hang on. Well, hang on. Let's go to Andrew first. Do you want? Do you want to guess? Um, a menace to society. I don't know. What? It's, a, it's an actor. <laughs> I, I know it's, it's, an actor. Not, it's, it's an actor. It's an actor. I thought we were guessing a film. No. No. I'm sorry. Oh, no, um, uh, Tay Diggs. Tay Diggs. I don't know. No. No. Phil. No. Okay. Uh, the only the silver I can think of was Skyfall. So Javier Bardem. No, unfortunately not. Okay, so back to Matt. Yeah. Okay. Second name is Gabe Walker. Oh fuck. Oh, I genuinely know that. I can't think what it is, though. You want to guess, Matt? Fuck. Oh. Uh, no. You don't want to get? Look, just guess. <laughs> uh, I will. I do know it as well. Um. Oh, 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 fuck it. Uh, Sylvester Stallone. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Ah, uh, good, good, One, good. Two, oh, three, I know four. it, I know it, I know it. That gives you four who points was, as well, Matt. Who's Deep know to Silver? What I know film it. was Deep to Silver? Oh, I can't even remember. <laughs> Please, it's <okay. laughs> I know this, I know this, for sure. <laughs> it's okay, it's done, it's done, he's got it. <laughs> Were you not paying fine. attention? <laughs> I can't, yeah, yeah, no, Matt's got it, it's fine. No, has he? Uh, who have I not done? Is it Andrew? Yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. desperate to find out who Deke the Silver is. I can't even remember what film he's like, called. Uh, hang, hang on, give me a oh, second. Oh, no, it's Nighthawks. Night Hawks. Hang on, it's, Night, it's Nighthawks. It's Nighthawks. No, Gabe Walker was Night. Gabe Walker was Cliffhanger. Yeah. I think it's Nighthawks. Deke the Silver's Nighthawks. 
Okay. It's Nighthawks. Uh, yeah, it um, is. It's Nighthawks. Yeah, Dick the Silver is Nighthawks. It's Nighthawks. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Sorry. Okay, so Andrew. Yes. Okay, so your first character name is Calidor. Ooh. Calidor. Calidor. Andrew. Steve Carell? No. Good guess. Um, let's move on to Phil. Not a clue, mate. Not a clue. Not a clue. Matt? Stallone. I know the uh, name. Schwarzenegger, but... sorry. I'll go Schwarzenegger. Just because you've done wait, Stallone wait, wait, and Willis. Wait, wait, wait. Hang on. You've just tra- trampled over Matt. No, you asked me first. Okay, I'll oh, go. Okay. No, he, he asked me, actually. I'll go Schwarzenegger. It is Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> what for? That's four. Yeah, it's four. Calidor, Calidor, Calidor was... Uh, no, it's five. <laughs> it's fucking five. Amazing. No, he was, it was called Calidor in Red Sonja. Uh, yes. I, just, I just saw the theme. And Matt, I, has scored, Matt has scored nine. <laughs> <laughs> that That'll do. That's fucking right. Great. So that's all three of you. Let's right? do a let's do a fake or bake, and then we're going to have to move fake. out the quiz. No, that's fine. No, that's, we've done it. We've nearly there. That's what I mean. It was quite efficient. So it's the last bacon or bacon, <laughs> which who was kosher. Um, so again, buzzing with your, <laughs> buzzing with your fucking names. <laughs> this has gone quite well. Um, okay, so here we go. The air up there, deep cover, Frost Nixon. He said, she said, and Quicksilver. Matt. Matt gone. Deep cover. Yes. Oh, Great the, film. The king of bacon. No, oh, Jesus. I do, I do love a bit of Kevin Bacon. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell. One, two, three. That is awesome. Four, so, 13. Look, whilst, Jesus, whilst... hang on, hang on, hang on. I'm just tossing up a t- one second. I'm literally nearly there. One sec. <laughs> hang on. Fucking hell, Matt. You've demolished this. Three, four. I've seven. never won a quiz. You, you have, haven't. You have, de- you have demolished this. So this the, great. the prize is, as always. Six. Hang on, hang on. First of all, yeah, Phil, yeah. what, what do the runners up have to do first? No, so this is, this is what I'm saying. So the prize right. is Matt gets to pick a film individually yeah. for each of us to watch. Mm-hmm. So Matt, that includes me as well. Yeah, because like, indiv- yeah. individually. That's so cool. It doesn't have to be like one. For the same everyone. film. Yeah. That's okay. Cool. I, I'm to... assuming kill ratio would have, would have would be quite. High <laughs> oh, no. Right? Can I just? I'm going to send you the scores because it's it's quite interesting. Uh, Matt, far and away, beat what, 13, which is great. Wow, uh, that's really good. You got nine points in the proof. Um, <laughs> Andrew is in second place with 7.5, <laughs> and uh, Phil Phil got six points, mate. <laughs> Disgusting. Fuck? Disgusting. Quite shocked. So, no, well done to it. There are obviously other rounds of those rounds to do because there are five people, but... Okay. Yeah, cool. Thank you so, for playing, well, guys. Hey, well, yeah, so no, really thanks good. for that. So it was really good. That was great. We've got yeah, two especially bits as I won. Uh, we've got two <laughs> bits left. We've got uh, the five films we're looking forward to next year and we've got our favourite film of the year. So, we're just going to list and list only for the five films we're looking forward to the most next year. I don't oh, have yeah. a list from Drew. So, for Drew, I'm going to pick... Um, kill ratio and whatever Simon <laughs> Phillips is next. Sharknado five, surely. Sh- yeah, yeah, Sharknado yes. five. Obviously, yeah. it goes without saying. So my my five films that I'm looking forward to most for next year: Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two for obvious reasons, Star Wars Episode Eight for obvious reasons, uh, War for the Planet of the Apes. Um, yes, just because yes. the trailer yeah, looks great, and the other two have been really definitely. good. John yeah. Wick Chapter Two, Ugh, of course, mm-hmm. and um. With hesitation, train spotting two. Yeah, mm. yeah, me too. Yeah. Be, my, I, I hate that, as, that fucking title. I put it as a, I put it as like an honourable looking forward so to. So Ross, mention, your, sort of, yeah. your ones for next year. Okay, I mean, War of the Planet of the Apes, definitely. Like, really excited about that. Hacksaw Ridge, very yeah, interested. Good call. Um, uh, Kong Skull Island, of all things. I'm quite. Interested it looks in. okay. Yeah, Wonder Woman. No. I'm just gonna They've got to get it right eventually, endless. haven't they? I'm going to wank myself off endlessly. It's fine. Uh, and uh, Paddington Two. Oh, which I to, no which good I shout! To wank, hey, no piss I, take. I, I Paddington to, was to amazing. Wank, I intend to wank myself off endlessly to that. So. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Drew, uh, so getting Drew. a little bear time. Oh yeah, Andrew, yours. <clears throat> uh, very quickly, uh, most of them have been said. Train Spotting Two, I love the original. Uh, War for the Planet of the Apes, I'm sure this is the one that's really going to nail it. Uh, Fate in the Furious, Fast and Furious Eight, mm. uh, John Wick Two, definitely, of course, and also hasn't been mentioned Alien Covenant. Hopefully, they yeah. can get it right. But you want you're looking forward to. I'm all worried. <laughs> no, 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 I'm, no. Worried I'm looking forward it. to it because nothing can be as bad as Prometheus. Yeah, do you know what? He's he's mm. pretty. You're pretty spot on with that. Uh, look. And after the Martian. 
So you know, well, yeah. yeah, but the problem with Ridley Scott is he's good film, bad film, bad film. Is he going to be no, oh, he's bad, bad, be, bad, 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 good? That's he is. What I agree. But also, maybe Alien Covenant will be a comedy. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> that, 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 yeah. So, <laughs> five films of oh. forty next year. Yeah, just honourable mentions to Fast and Furious 8 and mm. Dunkirk. Uh, Star Wars Episode 8, Guardians of the Galaxy 2, John Wick 2, Kingsman 2, The Golden yeah, Circle. I had that as well. And Train Spotting 2. So basically, so all, sequels, really. all of us Se- pretty much pick sequels. Of all, uh, basically, all the same films, basically. I don't want to do the, the boy ass, but the three I actually meant to put in my top five of it, I just said other things. La La Land, Fences, and Live by Night. Yeah, La La, La Land and Affleck. Live by Night. Definitely. Yeah. Affleck. Affleck. I am really, really excited. Yeah. Like, really excited. No, no, genuinely. Oh, think... can, can I just say that I have seen a couple of films from next year? Okay. Um, and Manchester by the Sea oh. is, I would be very surprised if it didn't end up in the top ten next year. You right. must okay. check it out. <laughs> so, really excited about that. So, Drew's number one film of the year. We've discussed it. It's been on my list. Uh, but it was Room. Mm. Yeah. I, it was my, my number one film of the year for right up until I saw The Nice Guys. And The Nice Guys, yeah. by far, my film of the year. I fucking loved it. It's the, it's the script, the acting. The, the action. The action, the, the tone. Amazing. Shane Black is the least recognised best director in, in, in working in mainstream cinema today and one day it's someone will turn up to see one of his fucking films yeah one day he's yet he to a... make a film that <clears throat> I really liked what well, Lethal Weapon really? to what direct kiss, a film kiss, kiss, bang, kiss, 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 kiss bang, bang 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 it's amazing mm. Iron Man even, also even his Iron Man Predator film great his yes. Predator film. Come on, his Predator film, guys. That his should Predator be good. Well, yeah. no, I'm not, no, no, no. I mean him directing, not in the film. Yeah, no, he's, he's directing a Predator, new Predator film. Oh, is he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm really, really, really it's excited. What we fucking need I have, now. I yeah. genuinely, I have no idea why, why you don't like the night. Why you he's don't just like not. He's just not the fucking wank fountain. I think you three think he is. <laughs> wank fountain. <laughs> It's like, it's not, I mean, War on Every, War on Everyone was on, 16 times Russell better Crow, than The Nice Guy. Here's, here's the, no, hang on, wait one second though. Russell Crowe and uh, Ryan Gosling are two actors that I have, except for LA Confidential for Russell Crowe, I have no interest in Russell Crowe whatsoever. Yeah. And Ryan Gosling, I don't get it. With no disrespect, I just I don't get it. And those two actors who I would never go and see a film with them in, I would never, I would never care. I loved every second. Every, every yeah, second. I, I could say the same for War on Everyone. You know, that's, with Scars Garden, Michael Pena. No, no, that's, 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 you know, that's fair. Yeah. That's fair. I mean, that's, they, I, mean I, agree they, they, I agree with that. I have I like to say, of, of, if, you, if you picked two films from this year that were really alike, it's definitely Nice Guys and War and Everyone. But that's what so, I mean. You know? That's, that's yeah. why I had the issue So you're going to put one to... way or another. Yeah, I think that's, that's not wrong. That's for not me. Fair, yeah. Oh, and Paul, oh, hang on quickly. War and Everyone, Paul Reiser. So, oh, yeah. anyway, Paul Reiser we're was talking amazing. about the Nice Guys. Yeah. And... I just, I just thought it was. I just genuinely thought the script was everything. Loved it. Shane Black script. The action was unbelievable, and the mm. story just kept going at a pace. It was fucking brilliant. It genuinely mm. was fucking brilliant, um, and it was my film of the year. So, uh, Andrew, your film of the year, <clears throat> the Neon Demon. Oh, what? Oh. <laughs> I haven't seen it, so I can't. And, really and now we know that. why Andrew doesn't like Rogue One. There you go. <laughs> Summed up by one yeah, 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 yeah. Not mutually I love Neon love Demon it. and hated Rogue One. That sounds like me. No, no, no. But they're not mutually no, 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 exclusive. But it's not mutually exclusive, but it yeah. shows that, that no, it's not. commercial sensibility to non commercial. I was going to say pretentious, but non commercial. Actually, you may <laughs> However, be. You, Neon you're Demon the, was you're, shit no, knows better you're, than that fucking last Phil, one. Phil, Phil, Phil you're, you're on the money there. No, not one film in my top 10 is mainstream. Actually, I've just realised. <laughs> I think fair. the closest, it, com- the closest, it, the closest it comes to is War on Everyone and Don't Breathe, which isn't very close at all. Um, and maybe the, uh, room, but, room, room, but the reason room. why the Neon Demon is number one is because I I liked the Push Trilogy. We talked about this yesterday, Ross. Push yes. Trilogy, Bronson. I love that. Great. Love that. Drive, yeah. everyone loved, and I, and I really didn't. And Luke then Laker. the opposite happened. Only God Forgives, I loved, and you guys hated it. Oh, I hated that film. Oh, I know. No, and, and there's a film I got 25 minutes in, and I actually yeah. did switch off. You're not going to like Neon Demon if you no, didn't I've seen it. like it. I've seen it. And actually, do you know what? I thought it was so much better than Only God Forgives. I it still, is I, I still yeah. think it's not, it, it's not a great film, and the ending is awful. 
Or the stopping. I disagree. I think stopping would be more of a. a, a point. I completely disagree. I just, I, you know, the lights it's were off. So, and I, I so had, an ass. I, I had a bit of weed, you know, just sit, sit down, and that, you know, that was just the uh, most uh, throttling experience I had. <laughs> it's just trounced everything. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I disagree. Uh, it was, this best film it, was not, it wasn't appalling. It sits in the Ghostbusters camp for me. It was mm. average. Oh, oh shit. Nah. So, uh, Matt, your film of the year. My film of the year, I kept on moving it between first and second place, but it ended up as Deadpool. Mm. We, we've spoken about it. Absolutely loved it. I've seen it a couple of times since, and it still holds up well. It still makes me laugh. I thoroughly enjoyed it and can't wait for the next one. <laughs> yeah. I'm really, really worried about the second one, given who's directing it now. Who's I'm directing really, it now? Really, the direct, mm. the, the, the direct, one of the directors of John Wick. I'm really, genuinely, oh, really, right. really, really, I'm, really, I'm, really, I'm really worried. Okay. Uh, I, I, might, no, 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 it might be, no, no, it might be fine. No, it might. Um, by the way, it might be fine. But the John Wick thing I had problems with, I've had problems with his other films. I'm, I'm worried. Okay. It's just worried. It's, I, I'll, I'll definitely go and see it. I'm not. How am I not going to go and see it? Yeah, I'm, it's fair I'm enough. I'm worried. Um, so, uh, last but certainly not least, Mr. Boyas, your film of the year. Or five. It's fucking green, bro. No, I don't. <laughs> uh, what's that film? Hey, it was released. It. it was released this year, uh, Phil. Yeah, yeah, no, this year you can actually have it. Last room. year, I was. No, like... I felt bad. I actually felt bad about doing it last year because it was the whole confusion about the festival sphere. But also, I've watched it six times. It's right. I think Josh. I think last year Josh tried to put in Revenant in his. Top but I felt bad. Years, but so. I felt bad. Yeah, and you I didn't did let him. Bad. But you let Green Room get in. And I felt no. And I genuinely, I'm not exaggerating. I felt, yeah, it was wrong. And and and, it's just extremely um, sorry, good. Just Andrew on that. The only point I'll make is Green Room had at least been screened in the UK. At yeah, there was a festival screen. Revenant I, hadn't been screened even for press in the UK mm. at that point. And the only reason it had been. I'm not arguing the toss. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just I'm, saying. And the only reason it had been seen was because a lot of people had seen it. In other yeah. ways, yeah, yeah, I know. I know. So, like, so that, that's I, why feel, I, 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 I agree. I'm, yeah, I agree. I do, yeah. But I feel, I feel the upsetting thing is almost a it Like me from last year has undercut it for this. You know what I mean? But like, I just there's no point. We've we've talked about it. So it's we've done this podcast for like four amazing. years, five years now on a Christmas. It's always oh. one of my favourite shows. Successfully, that is the first ever. Uh, film that's ever won best film two years running. <laughs> two years. Yeah. I just, I just, and I can't. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. It's just because all, if you look at my top ten, there's a really it's a very it's re, I think it's relatively diverse, and this one just I just I just I'm going to see it more and more. I am like and it's quite nihilistic. It's not like an upbeat comedy, you know what I mean? It's not like Keanu, which you could easily watch again and again and again or whatever. Like it just I just I think it's magnetic. I think it's just this amazing film, and we can discuss the whole blue ruin green room, you know, whatever. But like <laughs> I just think it's outstanding. And and with you know Anton Yelchin and just the effects, yeah, the way that it's structured, the, the Anton Yelchin thing, a weird twist on that film for me. Yeah, and that should, and Star Wars, obviously, it, but... Star Trek, sorry, coming out so close. Yeah, to Star Trek. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to right. give a nod to Star Trek because it, it's it's been it's not been mentioned by anyone, but I actually thought Star Trek was a really good blockbuster as well. My problem was I really wanted it to be the one that I might. This is my whole thing about the year because people talk about bad years and good years. I actually think this year has been brilliant for films, but I think the summer is one of the worst summers we've had. I oh, totally yeah. agree, Ross. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah. No, I'm one hundred percent with you on that. Yeah, and I thought Star Trek Three might be a one I would enjoy, and I liked the first half hour, forty minutes, and then and I've watched it twice. The just whole to be ending sure. with Idris it goes Elba right downhill. Weird. It's ga- the bit where they show a picture of Idris Elba before he became all mutated or whatever the fuck it was, just to show the audience, look, it's Idris Elba playing this villain that you can't <laughs> understand or know or yeah. care anything about. And and, and his whole and, backstory had no bearing on the film and whatsoever. I have to say, Idris Elba, awful. for me, almost got the Come In Your Career Is Up award for this year. I just, I don't get it. That I don't get it. And him, no. Bastille Day. Oh, you mean the take? You mean the oh. film they had to rename in the UK between yes. theatrical and DVD? The film they changed to The Take? They yeah. changed they... it from the cinema to the... To yeah, the... Yeah. Between, yeah, yeah, between coming out of the cinema and coming out yeah. of... Because yeah, they changed, I actually, they changed the title. To the I actually take. saw it come out. I was like, oh, Why? it's another Idris Elba film. No, it's not. Reading, it's exactly the same film. I started reading the plot and I'm like, no, same film. the same film what the fuck and how boring was that film i, as well? I had no idea i saw bastille day at the cinema i thought it was okay it's okay uh, but it's boring it, bastille boring. day had that same thing that the spooks movie had right mm-hmm. it would have made a fine 
two hour TV show. Yeah, or like a TV special or something. Yeah, like a, it would a if it was yeah. an episode of um, Luther or an episode yeah. of Spooks or something yeah. like that, yeah. I would have gone, yeah. it's fine. But as, but as a, a film, film nothing no, happens. No. I, reckon, I reckon this Bastille Day stroke, the take thing might happen more No, often. Andrew, it's happened a oh, lot. There's, yeah, there's been yeah. quite mm. a few No, films. no, no, even more than that. Because <laughs> that, remember, remember, that, no, that the could well one. have fooled no. me if I, if yeah, I was an agent. Yeah. You know the big yeah. one was Edge of Tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, of course. Lift, I repeat. Edge, yeah. Edge of Tomorrow went from being. Oh, no, 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 but, but at least Edge, I repeat. Uh, sorry, Lived, I repeat. Fucking Edge of Tomorrow two years ago. Um, they did actually have Lived, I repeat next to it. When yeah, Bastille yeah. Day came out, it didn't have the take. No, 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 of course. But, but of the course, fact yeah. that they rebranded um, uh, Edge of Tomorrow on BBC because it, didn't, because it yeah. was such a yeah. flop. Even yeah. though it's a great film, I really enjoyed it. But, I loved it. Yeah. It's great, mm. and and also the original title "All You Need Is Kill" is much better anyway. But yeah, but yeah, yeah. Right, right. But Live, Die, Repeat, repeat is a good. Is that's a good, a good title. title. All you need yeah, is kill is Absolutely. a great title. Edge of yeah. Tomorrow. Well, it didn't mean anything. No, it, did, it mm. just didn't mean anything. It was meaningless. So, Lift I repeat was anyway. A for more for more on this conversation, download <laughs> last year's fucking. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so we are gonna call it a, call it a day. It's been lovely. It's been really nice after not doing the yes. podcast yes. for me for doing mm. this for like like six great. or seven months. Getting together, arguing about Marvel, shouting at each other, calling each other pricks has been one of my most fun days. Of and the by year. the way, can, can I say, can I say yeah, it's been nice to you know have this um, uh, you know reconnection. Um, yeah, you know, we we should do it every year. But you guys have to come on the smoking lamb. Yeah. We just passed a million yeah. downloads a few days ago. Uh, in our thirty-one episodes, in we've had so many great guests, not least Larry Cohen. Oh wow! Um, yeah, we've had many great guests from from industry. Um, and we're going from strength to strength, and you all have a uh, you know permanent pass anytime you want to come on. That'd be great. Well, and this year, you... Andrew, I will take you up on that. I promise. <laughs> yes. So don't forget, you can check out the Smoking Lamb uh, podcast. As Andrew said, very successful. Can I can I mention where you can get it? Go. Uh, let me just call up my list because there's a few uh, iTunes, things. I'm guessing. Here we go. Uh, yeah, uh, thesmokinglamb.com. That's where all our written review stuff. Mike, uh, Mike does uh, DTV. There you can get the show there. You can uh, look us up Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at The Smoking Lamb. And also you can download the show at mininova.org, SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and Blueberry. Well, there you go. So please check us out. We, it's once a week, and they come out every Friday. And Mr. Boyask, I believe you have a film out next year? Yeah. So check, um, out, check out Ross Online, Twitter, Facebook. Yeah, just that Ross boy. Just stalk the fucker. Yeah, stalk just stalk me. It's fine. Mm, it's weird. Can I plug one more thing? Go. Um, in their shoes, uh, the book series. Just type my name in their shoes. Okay. You can see it. Amazon.com and .co.uk. Buy loads of copies. Leave reviews. I need reviews. Thank you. And Matt, anything you'd like to plug? Skype? No, nothing I'd like to plug at all. Skype? <laughs> would you like to plug Skype? <laughs> no. I what would, about you, uh, Phil? What about you, Phil? Hey, check out uh, www.philhopton.co.uk where you can see my blog, uh, Phil's Quick Capsule Review, which has been going on and off now since 2007. Whoa. So, um, well, I review films quickly for people like me that can't be asked to read a full review or one of you know, <laughs> Andrew's rambling 18-page epics. I'm joking, Andrew. Your reviews are awesome. <laughs> But I, but I never read them. Yeah, I never like... read long reviews because I just don't have the fucking yeah. time. <laughs> so I am very much a two sentence look at the score, watch the trailer, make my decision from that. Um, so there you go. Good. Uh, this will happen again. Uh, if not before, it will definitely happen next Christmas. But uh, mm -hmm. hopefully, it will happen again at some point. Thank you all for being on the podcast. It's been amazing. What's the um, name of the podcast again? I, 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 what's it called, Ross? What, dolphin, dragon, piss, dragon. Oh, we're gonna call, we're gonna call it Dragon Dolphin Piss Train Limited Productions or something. There you go, <laughs> kind of uh, and that that's who produced this podcast. Uh, don't forget to check out all of the uh, the everything. Just just check everything out. Andrew, me, Phil, Drew, Ross. Anything you want to say before you go, Andrew? Uh, it's been great, and. Um... Yeah, yeah. I, I, I look. At, this is the one thing. This is one of a few things I, I enjoy about Christmas. Later. I know, right? And that's why I had to do it this year, even though we yeah. don't have a podcast, and I have no idea what I'm going to do with this. <laughs> well, you are, you are going to call it Dragon Piss Train thing. Dragon <laughs> Dolphin <laughs> Piss Train there, there we go. How hard is it for you guys? Matt, to... anything to say before we sign out? Uh, no, apart from loved spending the last two and a half, three hours with you chaps. So uh, yeah, let's do it again. Cool, Ross. Yeah. 
thank you so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. I love you all, and um, I, I will be naked in front of all of you very soon. <laughs> and, you like uh, it. I, I'd just like to say thanks, Ross, for the quiz. That was at the best yeah. quiz yet. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank uh, you. Faking and bacon will uh, will definitely happen again. Um, <laughs> thank you all for coming on. Check out all the blogs. Uh, so this has been Phil Hopton. Out. Mm-hmm.